black men, white men, Jews, Gentiles, Protestants, and Catholics, would join hands and sing in the words of the old Negro spiritual, free at last, free at last, thank God Almighty, we are free at last. Come on in this house. Welcome back to the Nate Black Podcast. This is Big Boy the Boss, aka the Money Quarterback, making plays with the money. What up, bit? What it do, everyone? Can't be a legend without creating a legacy. What's up, John? What up, you guys? Back in the yo, back in the yo, back in the studio, man. We got two <laughs> special guests back in the building, man. Introduce yourselves. Well, I'm Gary Smith, Rich Spring South Cat, better known as Show Dog. I'm Carlton Gant. Represent Rich Spring and Baseburg. Okay, he sounded right. like he'd be like called it on the uh, Fresh Prince. He <laughs> <laughs> <That's right, that's laughs> should run for mayor <laughs> over there. He's like he, the, he could be the mayor of Rich Spring. <laughs> I mean, he's like 34 people. He could be a big time mayor over 34 <laughs> people. Yeah, ain't it? <laughs> about 35. But this, this is our first time having like, I feel like we got two like grown, mature men in the building. Like I said, I always love having people that can give me wisdom on. So I'm just trying to get wisdom on this episode or whatever. But like, first of all, why do you have Cleveland Brown? Oh, 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 if you know anything about history, Cleveland was the baddest team out when it was, you know, the football league, National Football League, before Super Bowl. Or something. It's the National you know, Football League it. now. You yeah, know when I your mean, team sucked, though, when you got to huh? talk about history. Yeah. Yeah. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. We got a couple more games when we had Deshaun Watson. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. Things going to change, yeah. man. Change. A Clemson legend. Clemson legend. Clemson legend. You a Clemson fan? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, we Florida State fans. I have he a Clemson fan too. I'm Clemson sorry. is awful, really, though. Like, y'all no. have been looking up all season no. long. Y'all looked up you against gotta us. Win the game. You got to have more points than the other. Yeah, y'all did yeah. that. But t- besides when y'all went to Notre Dame and they did that hey, uh, to y'all. Came out from Bowie. We got hit in the mile. <laughs> we, <got, laughs> yeah. we, we lost three games last year. Hmm. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Y'all, y'all hitting yeah. that way this year, too. How? Against who? Miami? Carolina? Come on, man. Gang guys might get y'all. We got, <laughs> we got home field advantage. Right. For the next we don't games. lose at the crib, man. We 39 and no, man. Clemson had a chance to win the championship because of the quarterback situation. Like, they can't score enough points to beat, like, Georgia. They can't score enough points to beat Michigan or Ohio State. But if so. you keep them from scoring enough points, then what? There you go. There you go. But still, if they score eight, y'all can't score but seven. Score, y'all don't play. Defense score. wins the game. <laughs> if we score. But defense don't win championships, in my opinion, no more. Because you got to have an offense that's going to put them points up. Quarterbacks win championships. Yeah. You got to have the best quarterback. And that's why Clemson was good for them years. They had Deshaun Watson, and then they had Trevor Lawrence. And before Deshaun Watson, they had Taj Boyd. He was a good college quarterback. Now, quarterback play looking risky and suspect. <laughs> ain't what you want. I mean, it's on the Just way. Just like for your NFL team, the Steelers. It's on Looking the way. Look suspect. It's on the way. It's on the way. <laughs> Who your yeah. team in the NFL? Panthers. Oh, uh, you're like a home time yeah, team. Yeah, I'm you're like, a home team. This, eight, this young boy, 803, on YouTube for anybody that want to know it. <laughs> we didn't know this to the day. He be in the comments. So, how did you hear about the podcast? Uh, First, I find out about the podcast through Facebook. Yeah, mm-hmm. through Facebook. Just a th- yeah. Okay, that one thing we gotta be have a presence on Facebook because a lot of people can see it. Yeah. So, like, what's like one of your favorite episodes? I'm gonna say Mally. Mally always, yeah. He always talking <laughs> yeah, about yeah, yeah, which one? Yeah, yeah. Every, every episode <laughs> yeah, with Mally. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mally is even, hilarious. Even just Mally being on there, he he just character. Yeah, man. just he a big ball head, yeah. bowling ball. I know, <laughs> bowling ball. Big volleyball here, but that's so cool because, like I say, you've been to come in and you support us, and like that's all we can say. I just appreciate because both of you are like you getting to come and you support us. You talking about how like you you doing something positive? Like, we got something going on, and I appreciate that because like a lot of people don't say that to us. A lot of people like they just you know don't say anything, and like sometimes you need that extra drive from other people because like I say, it's a it's a, it's a grind doing this, and like just we, what we have to get through every week just to put this out. People won't even understand, but like and then to do it consistently for like. Almost three years now. You know, hard. You know, week by week. You know, it, every day is like you gotta get this done, this done, this done. And you know, it's fun though because this is our passion. So it ain't like hard to do it. It's just something you love to do. Yeah. And then we got people like here, like this here, to talk with us. You know, so it's dope. You know, we just network. So what you do? Truck drive. You both of y'all truck yeah, drive. Oh yeah. Been for thirty-two years. Oh, that's yeah. consistent. I'm Twenty-two. Twenty-two years yeah. on the road. Yeah. So you over the road or you just drive locally? Well, I do regional. I run regional? about three or four states. Oh, okay. So you I, can ride. Yeah, I started out over the road. I done, I done been in every state except for about maybe seven. Seven states? Yeah. You been tough. in California? Yeah. So when you're on the road, you sleep in your truck? Yeah. yeah. Like, how, do you feel safe doing that? 
I ain't, I ain't never had no issues 22 years. Yeah, I guess but, you just don't even have to think about that yeah. because like that ain't something to think about. But just drive on the road, that's something that like you look you, you looked at back when you was my age or whatever. Younger than my age and like this is what I want to do or you just ran into that? Actually, um, my godfather got me into driving trucks. And um, like I've been knowing Gary since I was in high school. Yeah. You know, he always drove truck, you know. Yeah. Um, just being around the area, you know, you start looking back. Um, a lot of people I was around drove trucks, and um, like I say, I started riding in the truck with my godfather. He used yeah. to haul produce from down in Thomasville, Georgia, South Georgia, up back to Hunt, Hunts Point Market in New York, and taking them rides, like That's a during ride. the summer. That's yeah, a ride. yeah. So how you how you got started? Well, actually, you've been there thirty two years. Thirty two, thirty two years. Um, I um. My uncles drove, my dad drove, and um, I actually got started. I got my, um, back in the day, it was a class three. It wasn't a CDL, and I had got my permit when I graduated high school. And I was working at HWI, which is do it best now. Yeah. And I started spotting trailers there and asked them could I use the truck to uh, to try for my license. And they let me use it, and I got, I got my own um, license and whatnot. And, you know, just kept grinding, grinding, and then eventually I left them. Mm -hmm. And I uh, went to work with AAA Cooper, which was my first job over the road. And uh, I fell in love with it. It's like you your own boss, you know. Yeah. You know what you got to do. You know, you do it at your own pace. Yeah. You know, you want to stop, take your break. You can stop, take your break. It's something, you, whatever the case may be. But you know the, the task at hand. Yeah. So you ain't got nobody looking over your shoulder and stuff. It's constantly calling you. Yeah. You know, so it's freedom. It's freedom. It's exactly. freedom. But I think it's like, cause I was doing the Amazon Flex. And, like, the only thing about it to me is on the road is, like, you always got to be so alert. Like, you all the time. Because, like, you can't you can't take a day off driving. Like, that's that's a real job. That's a dangerous yeah. job, really. Yes. Like, like cause especially when you're in the 18 wheel, I always think, like, those are, like, just missiles, in my opinion. Because, like, <laughs> they just moving. Like, I saw one behind me yesterday. And I was like, I had to speed up. Because, like, you moving too fast to be behind me in a big old truck like that. You just run me over. Yeah, you just run but, straight through me. But it's the most dangerous job in America that's not regulated by OSHA. Truck driver's not regulated by OSHA, but it's the most dangerous job in America. Yeah, I what would OSHA do though? Like, what makes it dangerous? Just being on the road and having to be alert. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. I can believe it. I though. mean, because you got too many variables. Every mm -hmm. every car you pass, every every car is see. It ain't just about the people going the same direction as you. What about people coming the other yeah. direction? Cross cross mm -hmm. over center, across the median. You know, you got to hope a lot of things go right just to go past one yeah. car. Like both drivers got to be like, yeah, I'm paying attention. You don't swerve over. Don't swerve over. And like anything can happen in the car. Like one per person make a mistake, just like the woman running through the um the uh, red light going like a hundred, and she killed like by oh, yeah. Uh, like yeah the nurse, new, yeah, the yeah. nurse or whatever. Yeah. Like she made a decision, and like it changed people's lives forever, forever with a missile, aka the car. That's what I'm saying. Like that, and that's why I say in the 18 wheeler. But like I, I guess driving the truck pays very well though. So like yeah. I mean that also is gonna keep you in the game doing that because like you can take care of your family with that and like. There's a lot of jobs out here that you can't take care of your family with, and like so, you have to find that job that you take care of your family with. But you gotta, you gotta like it too to do it as long as we've been doing. I mean, just like y'all say about doing the podcast, kind of like your passion. Yeah. I mean, it's not work to me. It's like, mm -hmm. it's like I'm not, I'm tired from being awake for so many hours during the day. But at the end of the day, I'm not tired from working. Yeah. Yeah. See, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, I just drove. Yeah, like. just like driving ain't nothing to me. You know yeah. what I'm saying? People like, how you drive so far? Like, I drive from, they, they be like, I drive from Baseburg to Atlanta on time. You know what I'm <laughs> yeah. saying? I'm like, shoot, man, I go to Atlanta twice, no yeah. problem. Yeah, was like, Same day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, so you can whip up 18 wheeler. It's easy now. Man, 22 years. That's <laughs> Yeah, that's great, though. Because a lot of people have a lot of injuries and like a lot of uh, accidents at work. Yeah. Just in a plant. So yeah, being right. over the road and having to deal with everybody else on the road, that's the good yeah. thing. You ever been in the wreck? Yeah. Yeah, I've been in the wreck before. My dad used to say it's easy when you know how. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I used to, yeah, I used to know what that means until I got older. And if you know how to do something, it's easy to. Yeah, you that's know? the truth. Uh, I can put you in a truck and you catch the devil trying to back it. Mm -hmm. But I've been doing it for so long. He's been doing it so long. You can do it with your eyes closed. Yep. So, so once you know how to do something. But yeah, I was um, coming up 34 one, one morning, uh, coming out of Newberry, going up toward uh, Rock Hill. Mm -hmm. And the guy fell asleep. And he was crossing, he was coming at me, and I had no way to go because there was no shoulder. Yeah. And I kind of just veered to the right a little bit, but he went up under the back of my trailer and had me kicked him out. 
You know, if it pulled him under, it would, it would have killed him. Yeah. But it kicked him out. He was bruised up, a Mexican guy, but yeah. uh, he, 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 was, he was lucky to survive. Yeah, thankfully. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That would be a scary situation to be in. I always imagine, like, you know, being in a car wreck and, like, actually, like, the moment before impact where you, like, know you're about to get impacted, like, and you don't know what's going to happen. I don't even want to think about that. Like I said, you don't think about that kind of stuff because, like, that's the scary part about being on the road because, like, um, I live in Charleston or whatever. So, like, like I said, when we're done with this, I'll take a two-hour drive back there. So, I'll, I'm always taking that ride. And I don't never be trying to think about stuff like that because the road is so dangerous. That's why I know I'm on the road a lot. So, I know being on the road is so dangerous. So, is it anything y'all want to do off the road? Hmm. You ain't even thought about that. Well, yeah. You're 32 I, I, in the I, game, I, so. Actually, actually. Yeah, I, I've often thought about, you know, when I was in high school, I wanted to go to California. And I was dead set on going to California because I wanted to be, a, you know, an actor. Okay. Yeah, you want to be an actor? Yeah, I feel like hey. man, Denzel Washington, them cats. You can I do it. Nothing. I just, I needed a shot. Yeah. You know, just one shot. Yeah. So, so you, you know. never, you never um, tried to attempt to go get that shot? I didn't. I've been in plays and stuff up there, you know, at, at Star Center and stuff. And so, um, anything like that, I, I'll try to be a uh, participant in it. But never, never, um. Audition for a real um, movie. Yeah, I think when they did what that movie they did the program. Yeah, the football yeah. movie. Yeah. I think I went down. Come on, uh, Columbia. Yeah, they had it. They were doing it at USC. William Bryce. Right. You yeah. there? I went, in, <laughs> but I didn't get picked. So you gotta right. take. That. But <laughs> I even like respect the initiative to even show up to right. go yeah. and try to do it. We did the same thing with Real World, but like it take a lot to even like I'm gonna show up and try. Yeah. You feel me? Because I remember you told me on the phone like you could do the whole. I dream speech with by Martin Luther King or whatever. Y'all like, gotta see it. Yeah, yeah that's what I'm saying. He, he, he gonna do it on the show or whatever. We're gonna do it at one point or whatever. He said he can do the whole thing straight like through. So like I know acting probably like always been in you. You always wanna be on the T V screen. Like just giving your person and just giving you. You right, feel right, me? Because right. that's gonna make you feel the most of you. Right. Yeah? So like how that how that make how you even get to the, wanna be an actor, like watching T V? Yeah, basically. Yeah. yeah, basically. In your know, good times with with um JJ. And yeah, you want to be JJ? I can do that. Yeah, you know? I can be rich and yeah. famous on TV. Yeah. I can make people laugh. Yeah. Cause you you are a great storyteller. Just by being on the phone with you these couple times, like you're a great storyteller. So like you could like just do anything you really want. Yeah, you had us captivated on the phone. Really? Yeah, really okay, though. All right. well, thing well, we said I sat on the phone cause like you, he just added you in. I was just talking. Then they said you know we hit had an hour conversation like that. Yeah. He was like. But I mean, yeah, I mean, I, first and foremost, I said I want to thank you guys, man, for doing what you do. Mm. I mean, to be as young as you guys are and, and, and be devoted to something like this, yeah. and from a small town, you know. But you got to start somewhere, yep. you know. Uh, Charlemagne, he was from Charleston, yep. so Monk's Corner, at, yeah. Monk's Corner, Monk's okay. Corner. Same yeah. area, you know, basically. But yep. look at him now. I mean, you yep. never know how far this can take you. And so yeah. I just want to hats out to you guys for you know, doing it. what you do, and you get a lot of people's story out there yep. that. that Story wouldn't uh, had a chance to be heard. Exactly. If, if, what so, something like this? And that's yeah. what we're trying to do. Is like, who else is doing it around here? That in this around the area that can really like amplify. So I'm not saying go get that the most views ever, but like you can get a voice out here and anybody can click on that button and come you see need what you got to the say. right person to see it. Exactly. You feel me? That's all you need. Like you don't really views matter because like you just want that for ego. Like you want to feel like you people watching you and checking you out. But really, if you can change one person's life, that's all that really matters exactly. in the long scheme of things. You feel me? Because like you just want people to like get the advice you give and take it and be better. Because you don't want people to go through the same things you went through. They say that's wisdom, right? When you learn from somebody else by not doing it, but looking at what they do. Because we used to always say growing up, we learn what not to do from a lot of people instead of like learning what, what to do we right. learn what not to do and so you learn what not to do from people and you build off of that right. and like things like this we grew up we always wanted to be on tv also we always want to just have a mic in our face because we was twins and like you know being a twin like you just always kind of different like you, you get more attention because yeah. you're a twin so it's like you just want to captivate on what your gifts are that god gave you you know right, right. And that's what we actually and trying to, to say and that's what we, we were having a conversation also on the phone you were talking about like the problem we got in this world or whatever. And I was like, we need to have solutions. And I need you to tell me, like, just for our surrounding area, what solutions we need to, like, to build up? Because, you know, like, where we from or whatever. Like, I kind of feel like it's kind of stagnated. It's like it's not, like, a, a big growth. But it's, like, we need to figure out a way to a solution to maybe fix the, the area we live from, where we live at. Well, we, you got to start at home. I mean, basically, you know, um, helping each other, for one. A lot of, a lot of times we're against each yeah. other and that's our biggest problem holding one of them down not you know getting behind 
another person when they they come up with a business idea or something support them yeah you know don't don't tear them down yeah you know because i, I can remember when i was growing up you know there was a, a several black businesses mm -hmm. you know in rich brain you know, my had a fresh market you know uh zeb is dead on you know zeb um, yeah, I don't his get, dad yeah. um Mr. Sike, you know had a car lot um mr rivers had a washer so it was several black businesses in in the town of rich brain now Nothing. You, you, nothing. You know, Kevin got his car wash up there, you know, and yeah. uh, Ken Leapart got one in Manetta, and I think um, Tiger got the one in Baseburg. Uh -huh. But outside of that, and Miss Jessie made um, alteration. alteration. Mm -hmm. Church member. What yeah, you got? Yeah, You know? Yeah. And <laughs> yeah, that is the truth, though, because usually we'll have that conversation before. We had a big conversation, but like how the black dollars don't, don't stay in the black community a lot. And like yeah. that's the reason why, because like I said, we'll take our money to the Chinese place, people for food. We'll go to the A rap to buy some gas and the buy Mexicans. some, you know, some cigarettes. <clears throat> Well, but we but we don't have the places to go for black people though, cause we don't really own too much real estate. And, and and that's a part of the problem. Like we was talking on the phone the other day, me and Gary. You know, I was saying like I read something. You know, I try to read a lot. You know, so I can just kind of keep up with what's going on. You know, yeah. a lot of it I retain, a lot of it I don't. But you know, some key points. You know, I try to try to keep. But they was talking about this holiday season mm -hmm. could be over nine hundred billion dollars to be spent, mm -hmm. right? And we gonna be spending eighty something percent of that. <laughs> you know you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So none of those billions are going back into our community. You know, we talk about how you know, like he said, people back in the day had businesses. I mean, how many black dudes y'all know y'all age that are brick masons or carpenters? No, no Le electricians. Mm. No. You see what I'm saying? Plumbers. Yeah. Okay. Back in the day, growing up, when I was growing up, I'm a we had though. we had somebody with every trait. <laughs> no, I, I, I laid the flow. I laid flow. Flowing. We had well, you a flow man, then. yeah, yeah. Flow man. So we had somebody with just about every trade in your church. Yep. Mm -hmm. You know, somebody was on a deacon board that was a brick mason. You know, somebody in the church was a painter. Mm -hmm. Somebody on the deacon board that was a carpenter or something like that. You know, so a lot of stuff got did around the church by the people like, right there yeah, in the church. The network. So, you know, now you see church churches they go out. Maybe get a contractor from out of town to, to build a church or add do an addition onto the church. Uh -huh. You know, church was a community back then too. Yeah. Boy, I feel like yeah. you know, like the whole thing was a community. But now, like you, like in baseball, for example, that whole like little block is now just full of Mexicans or whatever. You know, because like they come in and they what create block? their community right there in baseball where they had that uh that gold place at, but they tore it down right across. Oh, the he talking about right there at, at Dean's. Yeah, right? no, where Quick Carry was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Dean, yeah. Yeah, Dean used yeah, to be over yeah, there, yeah. Yes. What it's called, Old Faithfuls now. Uh-huh, yeah. uh-huh, or whatever yeah. you feel me. It's like I mean, not nine. Dean's, Duncan's. It used to be Duncan's. But Duncan's. it's the A-Rap only now. Yeah, yeah, But yeah, the whole yeah. thing of Mexican now, you been down there? Yeah, I know But like the whole about. like block and like Mexicans, they put their stuff together and they like build they, off they, of they, it. They spend money together because what happens is black people don't want to see the other black person maybe shine too much better than they shine, so they're ready to spend their money in another community because I ain't got to see them shine. Yeah. It's crazy. And we, and we need more more black leaders like Peps trying to run for the um, – Patrice was trying to run for um, the school board. Yep. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You got to have your voice heard. Yeah, you know somebody in there got somebody to got to speak. About. Somebody got to speak for you. Yep. You know, when they do elections and stuff like this, they say, we polled people. Any, any of y'all ever been polled since y'all turned 18? Not I've never time. been polled. Nope. Never. You know what I'm saying? So, who like, they polled? It, exactly. So, who was there to hear what I had to say and put it out there to my. Um, Elect, electoral person you mm -hmm. see what i'm saying yep. so you know our voice is never heard because we don't have people in our community in there speaking for us because we don't control anything a lot of people don't run also that's a problem yeah. though like the change is a problem like voting is a change but you need to be running too we need to have a people to vote for like i said if i was in baseburg I would have voted this year because I'm definitely going to get out of my bed to go vote for my aunt. Yeah. So, like, you got to have people that you actually know to make somebody want to get out of the bed to go vote. If you see everybody on the ballot and you know zero people on there, how they going to make you want to go vote, even though you should? Right. And that's exactly right. You made a great point there. A lot of people emphasize vote, 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 vote. But if you go there, like you said, and you don't know nobody on that ballot, you don't know what they're standing for, so you just voting because it's a party. Yep. You know, I'm voting Democrat. I'm, you know, I'm voting Republican. What they gonna do for you? What What are their What are their um issues? Objective. Exactly. Exactly. So that's another. We need to be educated as to you know who is running and put somebody. If we can't get changed in, find somebody that you feel like is gonna speak for you. 
Yeah, but a lot of people don't even care enough to even do the research to figure out what's going on and what people are talking about. Like, man, I don't care that much about it. They do want to have a voice as it's saying voting, but I, I agree. I think I haven't voted. That's why I I, don't, I never voted a day in my life because I feel like I, I haven't got to the point where I feel like I need to vote for this person because they're going to really do something for me because what I want is reparations. I'm sick of the lies, man. <laughs> I'm sick of getting lied to. I don't like getting lied to. You exactly. You know, you're like, Listen, you're telling me you're going to do this stuff, yeah. but, you know, <laughs> you'll go on. I ain't nothing. Like, but, what is we talking but we're about? We're not, man. we're not holding the people feet to the fire because we're not going out vote. So they're not worried about if you get mad right, or not. Right. You yeah. see what I'm saying? They're not worried about this. Well, you don't vote anyway. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's true. Did y'all vote over yeah. recent? Do you yeah. do you believe in withholding your vote if they ain't giving you what you want, or you just feel like you need to put your vote out yeah, there? Yeah, you still need to put your vote out there, and like, like it, but it's locally about, and like nationwide. Yeah, yeah it's about so you vote president. just pick, picking the. Best person you lesser think. Two evils. Yeah, you yeah. want to pick the lesser of two evils, though? <laughs> Sometimes it's like that. I mean, you go you go on a job, and you got you got a chance to work for two different supervisors. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of like kind of like that. You see what I'm yeah, saying? You yeah, know, yeah. you, know, like, you still like, got to be on the job yeah, making money. You see? Yeah, but, it, but it, true, though. at the same time, the supervisor more closer to you, like the the president or the, like the governors, they never really touching your everyday life, but so they still in a way well, control well, it, what you do every day. It does. They had something. They had something on the books about. Um, I got to I got to look up to see if the vote passed or not. Selling liquor on Sundays now in South Carolina. You know, they do. You, you, you look back. What? You can say a lick on Sundays, ain't it? No. no. Uh, okay. uh, 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 no. That's okay. just like South Carolina liquor store. Liquor <laughs> store closes at seven, right? right? Yeah. But you can go right over to Augusta, eleven o'clock. Eleven o'clock. You see what I'm saying? So, so voting, voting matters. Those things. And if you get somebody that's gonna run and promote that. They can get people to vote yeah. because they're like, I agree with it. Even though I'm um, Republican, I'm going to vote for that Democrat right there because he said he going to give me this law that's mm-hmm. going to keep the liquor stores open and later. that's going to make my life better because sometimes I don't feel like going before 7. I want to go at 10. I find out I want to go at 10.30. You feel me? Sometimes it's popped up. You feel me? It, it, feel me? it, it, makes, it makes a difference, especially in your county, like your sheriff. You know, you got these sheriffs that don't care nothing about us. Mm-hmm. And they're not going to send extra patrol cars in our community. They go send them to the other community, you That's know. True. So, you you got to think about stuff like that. The corner when somebody passes, you got you vote for your corner in your county. Mm-hmm. The corner decides whether they go do an autopsy or not. Whether it's gonna be an investigation on the death, you know. And so when you when you, when you know the corner, that's a, that's, a, that's a weird job, right there. Right, right, but when you know the corner, then he can say whatever any kind of way the person passed away, and then I can say it can be a closed book. It swept up under the right. right. That's right. what they did probably with the murder or murders. You ever heard about that? The yeah. murder yeah. murders. Not saying they swept it on the road, but when you got so much power and you saw it at the top, you control a lot. A lot of stuff gets swept on the road. You feel me? Right. No people. Not only that, judges too. Mm-hmm. Ju- your judges exactly. too. Judges, you know? yeah. like your your magistrates. Your, your, your magistrates. Yeah. yeah. I always wondered. Like, I mean, this is not a goal of mine, so I never went hard to do it. But like being a judge, like the power that gives you. Like, how do you feel in your regular life just being a judge? Like, when you ride around, like, the police stop you, what they do? You gonna arrest me? Really? <laughs> 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 and see, and see that's, the, that's the power to it. Because, see, the thing about it, if if you get pulled over, if you're a judge or a magistrate, right, in Lexington County, let's use Lexington County. If you're a judge or a magistrate in Lexington County, and you get pulled over by a Lexington County deputy, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. At some point, that deputy got to bring a case before you. Mm-hmm. So it's how hard he go push his pen. Is he just gonna let you go? He'll he go write you a ticket or whatever, you know. I'll let you go. You see you see what I'm saying? Because it could be that day that that deputy has to go on trial for murder murder charge or something like that with somebody and he got all the evidence, but it could be that one fact that could be missing and just say, Okay, well, we're not gonna even push this past the next right That's here. It stops right here. You know, case dismissed. And then you gotta got somebody that shot somebody to go free, all because mm-hmm. the judge and the deputty don't get along. Yeah, you see what I'm so saying? you so, vote judges and deputies in? No, no, uh, judges, sheriffs, coroners, you know, people like that. Oh. So the solicitor for the county. So yeah. how many judges like in the county, like say Lexington County, for example? Uh, what uh, is their job just to be judges at the courthouse for like well, criminal? You have them, you have them with different things. Like you know, have family court judges, probate, um, criminal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You know, probate judges. You know, they do different things. You know, so all judges ain't the same. Like. 
a judge that does probate ain't gonna be on a murder trial. Oh, okay. Yeah, because okay. he he dealing with like probating families, you like mm. you know, wills and stuff like that. You know? I say like the money. Though. Money yeah. don't always equal power. Like these people don't make say make the most money than like other people in the. Like you know, Elon Musk, yeah. Them, yeah, but they, but run they, back. Yeah. they got power, power. Well, they you, can really change stuff. You, you look at like President Obama. I mean, what's what's the going salary for a president now? What around about? I see it was four hundred thousand. Yeah, yeah, around about four five hundred thousand. Mm-hmm. You know, that's it. But but think about it. That's a four year salary. But you don't have to pay for nothing. You gotta spend nothing. You, you know, you ain't gotta you ain't gotta spend nothing. But like President Obama, he get paid what five, ten million just to show up to talk to people. Yeah, book, you know, book, book deals and all type of stuff. Book deals. That's that's where you get your money at. And he talking to people that we can't even get in the same rooms with, and that's why yeah. like people like, how can you get paid five to ten million dollars to speak because the people that's there are paying a hundred thousand dollars to be there to right. hear him speak. Kind of, kind of getting off, kind of getting off the, <laughs> off the career path a little bit. <laughs> But you know the exhibition fight that Mayweather did it just did right. Uh-huh. He wanted a million dollars just to take the phone call. Exactly. Yeah, so you that's see how much how boom. much my time is worth. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When you got that kind of power, you know it's like I ain't gonna even talk to y'all about the, promoting this fight. If you gotta give me a million dollars for me to take the phone call. I saw yeah. on Twitter BC. Mayweather had pulled up Dubai on his private plane or whatever, and like he was having problems like boring. Called the uh, Dubai like you know princes and stuff like that. Thirty minutes later, he going through. Yeah, but that's <laughs> it's about no, what you know about who you know. Right, so you know, plug into the right people, and if you don't achieve to the top level, you can't really be stopped, man. Yeah. Like the world is your oyster. Yeah, and, and the you world, just live it. and the world is the and the, like you said the um the untouchables, untouchables, the untouchables. <laughs> like you say, you, you can't touch them or whatever. Like I say, with the Kyrie situation, or whatever. How you feel about that? Well, I mean, it started way before Kyrie. You know. Um, Ice Cube talked about it back in the 90s. Yep. You know, when he had that album, Deficit. And then when um, NWA broke up, and he was talking about Ren and yelling on them, and he would tell them, you know, you let the Untouchables break up our crew. You know, um, not only him, you know, we got uh, Tupac, mm-hmm. Michael Jackson, Bill Cosby. And the list goes on of people who, once they stand up against the powers that be, on untouchables, it's a problem. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. it's a problem. They they gonna find a way to bring you down, and it, it goes back to Malcolm, mm-hmm. yeah. Martin, mm-hmm. uh, Marcus Garvey, and the list goes on. You if you, you do some research on these guys, every one of those per, uh, people who start to reach the masses of our people, yeah, and start to wake you up to a conscious mind, in order to straighten your spine up and be a man to provide for your family. Um, what was the uh, the Black Panther Party? Yep. You know when they first started, they was um, feeding kids breakfast. Mm-hmm. You know, and they was teaching them, you know, how to be men and women. And once they see how they said, "Uh, uh-uh, <clears throat> no, we got to stop that." Yep. Mm-hmm. So you notice, know um, like I said, you got people like um, Public Enemy, KRS One, uh, those groups used to have positive rap. Yep. But it was educating you and getting you to go on the right straight and narrow. Well, they saw that was that was uh uh-uh. uh. They had to start to bring it against the rap into the day, talking about you know bees in the holes and I can sell killing birds. and all that. Right, as long as the powers that be the untouchable promoting that, they don't see nothing wrong with it yep. because it's in our community. Mm-hmm. They you made know? it just feel like life is so cheap now in our community. Like I say, people will get killed. Like they'll just kill like the, I don't know, the rapper that just got killed. Like right. just take your life away and like don't even care about it. Keep it moving. And it, it becoming happening so regular to it don't bother you anymore. It's yep. like it numbs you. It's desensitized. Like desensitized. Okay. Seeing death, you desensitized now. Yeah. I don't yep. like to see death on like the toy page and stuff like that because it's so much out here though. Oh yeah. I, mean, I feel got, like watching first four days is like brand type energy to you though. But do you guys ever heard of Doctor Savy? Yep. Okay, you got people like Doctor Savy. Um, what's his name? Dick Gregory. Yep. Those those was great and always wasn't afraid to speak. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Where are they? They in the ground. Well, I guess they, they was more they? old though. God, Dick Gregory was pretty old. You watch that Breath Club interview with him. Yeah, it was yeah. pretty. Like yeah. I said, he was a pretty yeah. unique person. Right. Right. Yeah. Like <laughs> how his his mindset. Like he, he was a comedian, yeah, but he right. grew to be so much more. But he, cause he's also working with on um, white folks or whatever. He was working in at some point in time. Like you know, I feel like that's the best way to see how white folks are though. When you work with them, you get to actually see how they. Or behind the scenes and not just a boogeyman white person they just regular people so they just think regular i saw a video i don't know if y'all saw this on 
Twitter or whatever. It was just white teachers talking to his like black students. He was saying like inherently like he gonna think his race is a superior race. And really, what he said wasn't wrong. Everybody should feel like that. Yeah. You should feel like your race is a superior race. So like white people feel like they are superior. That's how they supposed to feel. It's all about actions though. Black people gotta get build themselves up so they can feel the same way. Yeah. And really, and it, and it be the truth. Because yeah, like be when true. white people feel like they're the dominant society, they honestly are. They run stuff. Like when you see, like if you, if you go to like my job, quote unquote, if you see the top ladder of all the people at the top ladder, it's not one nobody look like us on that top ladder. Because like I say, that's just how it works. That's just how the, the world works. So, so, so you think it's always been that way? It's, yes, it's always. It, I ain't going to no, say it, it always has been that no. way, but I'll say for the longest of time, it always it has yeah, been Yeah, for your way. lifetime. Yeah, yeah for, your but, life. for your lifetime too. Mine too in America. Basically. Mine too, basically. Yeah. But, but in ancient times, no. Yeah. Yeah, no. yeah, I'm saying like in America, yeah. yeah. Like after slavery, like well they had reconstruction, Even but after before, reconstruction it was like What about before? before yeah, before, yeah, before slavery, yes. Okay. We were definitely running our own lives. Okay. Definitely. So so that brings me to this question, make sure you guys this. Do you think integration helped us or hurt us? Hurt. I, I think it hurt. hurt. I definitely agree with it hurt. Def- it yeah. definitely hurt us. Okay. Wow, I'll tell you why I think it hurt us because like it never was gonna be equal or whatever. So they weren't gonna give us the same that they gave us or whatever. So when we segregated into with each other, like they still were gonna treat us the same. But if we if we, if we didn't integrate, in my opinion, I feel like it would have hit us because like we would have still been teaching our own. We would have yeah, yeah. we could stand on our own. And we still gonna have the same stuff they're gonna give us because like we're gonna have the old books, the old everything still. Yeah, but, but it, go ahead, go. It go, it goes back to a little bit what we was talking about before. I'm gonna ask y'all a question and then I'm gonna expand on it. Um, things that y'all might have heard growing up and never really put no thought into it, like um, growing up, you say um, we going across the tracks or we going down in the bottom. Y'all know what that know what that means? Mm-hmm. Like you, that we going to a specific place, ain't it? Across the tracks, like going to the white side of town or the black side of town. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And the bottoms is. Y'all ever watch the heat of the night? No. Nope. Well, the black people stayed in on heat of the night. The even, the even now, the bottom. Yeah. And yeah, it, the bottom. Every town you go to, yeah. you probably got a bottom. Got a bottom. Yeah, the base break, yeah. we stayed up top. It was a bottom. <laughs> yeah. yeah, see, yeah. y'all stayed up top now. In y'all generation, back yeah. then, we wasn't allowed up top. You had to stay down in the bottoms. Uh, yes. Out in the country, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like you most, most of the time, you stayed on some land that you – for the person you, for the farmer you work for or whatever. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? It goes back to the ownership. Yeah. You know, and with the segregation is because we was on our side of the tracks, we spun our money on our side of the tracks. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We had ownership on our side of the tracks. You okay. see what I'm saying? Yeah. But then without segregation, we we was able to move up top. We was able to move on the other side of the tracks. And we get, kind of gave our money to the other side of the tracks. And now, white man, we 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 ice money colder. Back. There you go. No, you, 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 you you just want to see what's on the other side. It's always like the grass is not always green on the other side, but sometimes it's like you got you got to see for yourself. And like I said, you see these white folks living all glitz and glamour, where they're like, "Man, I want some of that white pie. I yeah. want some of that white pie. That smell good over there." <laughs> you <man>. try, because <laughs> like I say, you know, we told in our head, like I say, black magic. You know, white angels, they angelic or whatever. It's good like, white skin over there. You know, you feel me? <laughs> like it, it is some people out here that just like it. They just yeah. want to kind of live on that side of town, and it's not. No, I don't, it's not wrong with it, my opinion, but like I say, it's just their opinion. But it's about knowledge too, you know. The eight ball is what it's black. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, um, when you write it on the paper, paper the paper is white, but the pencil is black. black. You see what I'm saying? Everything the angel food cake is what it's white. white. Devil food is what black. black. It's programming. <laughs> you feel? So yeah. You see what I'm, yeah. It, they program you to feel like you know you're lesser. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. In 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 movies, who always rides in on on what? The white horse. The white mm-hmm. horse, and he's the what? What kind of knight? Black, black knight. No, the no, white the, knight. The white knight saves oh. the day. Man, wow. not black yeah, knight. That's Martin Lawrence right there. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. The white the white knight always saves. Yeah, it's the all day. about yeah. program. Like you yeah. say, like television, tell a lie. Tell a lie to your vision. <laughs> yeah. Tell a lie to your vision. Because yeah. it's just like um a highlight tape. You watch a highlight tape, it may it look like the best thing ever. Everything, but you watch the season, yeah, like right. you weren't even that good. Yeah, you right, exactly, like, exactly. you show me your best twenty plays. You got like yeah. twenty highlights from one game, yeah. type <laughs> shit. <laughs> like, you weren't that good, but 
but that's a lot of people's life they show they, they show on social media though like they show they highlight mm-hmm. they ain't showing the struggle they go through every week where yeah, like it's hard to pay their bills like struggle they like pretty more don't yeah. want to show that and, yeah, and, and that's, that's where, where a lot of people get confused a lot of people want to be content creators um people want to be um instagram models and all like that but they don't want to put in the put in the work like you know after this ends, y'all still got to work. Yep. Before this started today, y'all had to work. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of people just want to take a couple pictures, do a little video, and that's it. They yep. think that's it. It's it's more work to it. It's net, networking. You don't you don't become the next great thing by just doing something one day. Doing the bad minimal. Is exactly. Right. You know, you not become become a star athlete just by showing up. To practice, you got to do, go in before practice and after practice. And after practice. You know, so. It ain't just about game days. It's all about the process to get to the game. Exactly. Like they say in life, the journey. Exactly. You got to enjoy the journey. Yep. And basically, what you put in is what you're going to get out. Exactly. Malcolm Gladwell said, put your $10,000 in if you want to be a professional. And that's what we're doing right now, just grinding, consistently right. putting the hours in. And over time, we will get the way we want to get it, no matter what, because everybody do. We're not saying like everybody do, but like it just depends on what's in your head that you want. You like got we it. want people to know we do a podcast, and like kind of we already know, did it. Yeah. Got, people got know we do a podcast. We got a foundation, I like to say, um, I just feel like, you know, it's just another level we got to take where people really take it more serious. Like our voice really means something. Because I, I mean, we doing this to have a voice. Obviously. I feel like we got the knowledge to help people too. Just like y'all or whatever. Y'all can give wisdom out to help the youth and help the older people. Because like we always talk about on the phone, we never too old to learn right, something. Exactly, exactly. And that's like, you know, we had a group in Baseburg called um, Legacy Builders. And basically we were trying to, you know, mentor young kids that, you know, in the neighborhood, and then the pandemic came up and kind of mm-hmm. put a damp on that. But uh, John Levels, I don't know if y'all know John Levels. I heard John that. Levels, Sean Dozier, you know, okay, yeah. and we we was trying to put that together, and it kind of got you know halted with when the pandemic came, pandemic came out. But uh, that's something that you know that need to be done because a lot of these young kids they want to do better, but they don't got an outlet. They don't know where to go, and you know what the streets gonna, gonna mm-hmm. do for them. So what was the legacy business? I mean, it, it was a it was a program that we had. We were going, you know, take them different trips. You know, mm-hmm. um, her as a woman, you know, teach the young, young girls how to set tape, just basic stuff that you do, young men, how you know to speak, okay, how okay. you know you go to walk with your woman on the left side, so if something hits you, it hits you first, right? Yeah, and, you know, little stuff like that. Yeah. You know, yeah. that you'd be yeah. surprised that most most guys yeah, don't know. Yeah. Y'all would be surprised if y'all talk to a lot of young black people. They never been to a black tie event before, mm-hmm. you know. You know, a lot of people don't know how Have to conduct I, themselves I right. at a black tie event. You, you see what I'm saying? Uh-huh. And, and that's things that that you need organization like Legacy Builders to to teach the young people mm-hmm. because a lot of their parents ain't, ain't don't even it. know how that yeah, stuff. Exactly. Like I say to be the successful exactly. citizens in this community or whatever, you kind of need to know these things. Like I say a lot of people do take off the beaten path because they don't even know what's right. They just trying to be get along with the get along. Exactly. And like if the get along bad. That's what we get along with. Exactly. I know a lot of people don't even know how to dress for the event. You know, they'll come to a wedding with some J's on. I'm not saying <laughs> it's some J's you can't wear to weddings or whatever, but like at a wedding, I feel like you got to come dress a little classy. Mm-hmm. You know? Exactly. Because I want to present myself to everybody as a person that's like ready for the event and up at your lawn, you know? Yeah. I want everybody to look at me like I'm um, superior dress. I should be here. Like, I don't want to go nothing half speed. Like if I'm gonna go do this podcast, I want to go full speed to do the podcast, and that's why we built a studio like this for a podcast. Because a lot of people want to put the work in. You see a lot of rappers. A lot of people be rapping, but they don't never build themselves a studio. Really, right. maybe a uh, um a person like C might here build his studio. Like he raps some, but more he more of a producer yeah. or whatever. You feel me? Right, right. Producers will build a studio, but like a rapper, you rapping. If you want to rap, you can go rap anytime if you got your studio. Yep. I know it takes money, but it's like, that's what I'm saying, like what y'all was saying about trades. If you get into a trade, you can build off your trade. You yeah. get your own time. That's why, like, right now, I want to get into IT. Yeah. So, look, with you saying that, let me ask, you, let me ask like, y'all a question. If you got a position being a director of IT, not just IT worker, director of IT, high six-figure salary, mm-hmm. right? Full paid benefits by the company. Would you cut your hair for it, for the position? No. Nope. Why would they even ask you to cut your hair? I feel like that disrespect for the ask me to cut my hair. They ain't gonna do nothing with my job. I, I I agree with you, but 
when you go to sit down at the round table with other directors across the country, mm-hmm. they don't really see this too much. There you go. Well, it just depends so on what, so what, so what, what high want. six figures it was, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, I mean, I'm not saying that that that's something that you should give up. I'm just, I'm just asking, would you be willing to do that? Because that be a lot of our issues with the black community is, is that they feel like they shouldn't have to conform to do certain certain things. And I, and I, I'm right there with you. I don't feel like you should conform to do a lot of things, but some things you, you have to. to look at the look at the bigger picture because once you become the director of IT, then you can get me in there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So you got to look at the big. You got to think about creating that ladder. And then, like yeah. a white dude, they can't wait long hair either, really, as direct. It, 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 so, exactly. like, it's the same. And they got to be clean shaven. Yeah, you, you, know? you see what I'm saying? So, you know, sometimes we forget about that. You know, we forget about investing into ourselves and investing into our back into our community. And then, you know, we look around at the community and you see, like, you go in the black community, it's always the yards bad. Mm-hmm. Yep. You, you know, you go in the other communities, they keep it, they clean. Keep, they keep it clean. Manicured. Professional. Exactly. Because that brings the what? Property value. value. Yep. yep. You see, so you go on one side of town and you can buy a 2,100 square foot house for 150K, but go on the other side, 2,100 square foot house, and it's 250K. Yep. It's how, how they keep it up is the value. But <laughs> I want area. You was talking about conforming or whatever. How y'all think I thought about like the leaders like like Stephen A. Smith, Shaquille O'Neal, Chuck, them. <laughs> how, how you thought about them conforming to what they want the untouchables to, to say? And I ain't trying to backtrack. Well, sell out. <laughs> sell out. <coughs> I'm just putting it in there, sell out. I mean, you got these people that once they get to a certain level, they, they're not going to risk losing their money. But what you just saying, we being a director or whatever, they can't risk losing their money because they, they employ so many other people, so they can't stand on that front front line because, like, them stand on the front line mean a lot of people got to walk home sad, sad. They, ain't, they still going to be rich. A lot of people going to lose their job. Exactly. exactly. So you got to think about that kind of stuff about you got to kind of play those people game because they created the game and they run the game. So so how far do you go? I, I mean, I ain't going to say they they went a little too far. That's why you see they was all backtracking. But I ain't going to say that you you could denounce that kind of t- terminology I was talking about, though, because you have to because, like, if you even slight bit he Kyrie just um, posted something. So if you a slight bit agree with any of that situation, they coming at your table. It's, it's easy to get canceled nowadays. Mm-hmm. So easy. Yeah. Yeah. But see, the thing about it, like I said, he, he just retweeted it. Yep. He didn't write it. He didn't produce it. <coughs> mm-hmm. You know, but why, that's how, why they not going at Amazon? But that goes to show you who the untouchables coming at. Like, they, they not going to go out to Amazon. Okay, okay. Now, you say that. But what if everybody would have followed suit with Kyrie and said, "Well, y'all gonna um, suspend him for five games? I ain't playing it." But and and then it's kept on falling suit. Yeah, everybody you know did it. They'll change it. They'll change it because be right what? Back. If they gonna put money in those seats. They got to put butts in seats. But you see how them D League players? So y'all say y'all don't want to play? We'll get somebody to suit up. And they'll play. Well, Somebody well, gonna play. That's the problem. Somebody going through that picket fence. That's what I'm saying. That's our our biggest problem is we won't stick together. Yeah, yeah, that's the biggest, but it's kind of hard because, like I say, they making money that take care of their family, like their next generation, yeah. like they got the type of money they like. We only dream and imagine to gotcha. aspire to get. So, like you get to that point, I worked too I hard to get this up. Back. I worked too hard to get. Okay, these lonely nights I had doing right. all this stuff, right. I can't give it up. Why? Because if it's, if, for, if it's for the better good. Okay, like cause you drive, I'm gonna drive it right. Okay, everything that you touch, everything. I don't care what it is. Think about it. Everything you touch has been on a truck at one time or another. Mm-hmm. They got ships. They got planes. But I ain't never seen one pull up to Walmart. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> now, <laughs> ask Carlton, he's a driver like I am. If the drivers would unite and say, I'm not moving the truck. I'm not going to move it. A lot of shit is Two Ooh. days, we'll <laughs> shut the country down. Yeah. But, two days. But why won't a lot of drivers do that? Because just like you said, I, I got to feed my family. Exactly. It's that serious, but, though. But if you but, sacrifice but, for two days. For two days, guess what you got now? More money. Yeah. But guess what? These people are like, but now your boss is quote unquote, they looking at you like, 
I know what you'll do, so I never trust you again. So now you they got upper hand on you because like they always get rid of you for anything. Well, see, you you talking about in a situation like a, a plant job. A worker B. <coughs> no, I'm saying even with the NFL. Like if they if they okay, total line, NBA, they say something like out the way. Now you know you might not never get a job again. You might finish this country guy, but nobody never sign you again. It, it depends on it depends on where you at. I mean, you look at Kaepernick, everybody says, Okay, well he ain't in the league playing no more. But he's he's still doing good because he waited to he got the contracts. You know now he has his foundation, so you know he can get paid off of his foundation because he's still ahead of it. But he's doing good. But his passion is to play football, <clears throat> and that's going to make him the happy. I say life is about you only get one life, mm-hmm. so it's about doing things that make you the happiest. And I can guarantee you, if he could play another down of oh, football yeah. NFL, he would do it tomorrow. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like, so it's all about happiness, in my opinion, like peace and happiness. And like but, I say. It's hard to want to put everybody else first when you ain't got it. And that's why if you can get yourself <coughs> to the point where you got it, maybe you can. Mm-hmm. But you get so inflated with so much money because Kyrie done made a lot of money. And you can tell he don't care about money as much as a lot of people, but he can't give up all his money. And the NBA is his passion. It's hard for him to be like, I ain't going to stand down on this. I ain't going to bend the knee because I love doing this. Right, right. It's like if a rapper had to bend the knee to keep rapping, he going to probably bend the knee because – he love rap that much, not not just because of the money. But now, yeah. if he if he's if he's really passionate about his cause, I would suggest to him to not leave the NBA, but to invest some of his money into people that are for the same cause. You know. Yeah, that's what they said. That they say Kyrie they, is. They had sent that five hundred thousand dollars back to him. They're like, they need to send some of that five hundred thousand to Dr. Umar. And it's people like that. school. Send to a school. Okay. Let's build Dr. Umar school. Okay. They see what Dr. Umar gonna do. Okay. Do he really want to help black children? I believe he do. Oh, I know that. Do, do, do y'all do y'all listen to Dr. Umar Johnson? Oh, no doubt. I've been. I met him. I shook his hand. Oh, oh, man, man. That's dope. He was in Columbia. Oh, yeah. so that's why I like you. You'll go pull yeah, up to these yeah. places yeah. like when these people come. Cause, like I hear about them coming, but I never pull up. I done met. I don't know. Met you Farrakhan. met Benedict. You, you met. He had a great speech. You watched it when he was talking no, about yeah. all this. Oh, of course. Great fifty-minute yeah. speech, yeah. dog. Like yeah. Farrakhan, like I one of the greatest on, speakers. Um, on, on my snap. I on mean, your snap? Yeah. Okay, okay. I did. So, you too, um, right? how many rallies you been to in, throughout your life? I, what big, t- did, big type did, of rallies? Um, me, man, March. Mm. Um, so, in 1990? Yeah. You were there. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Um, Gen 6. Y'all, y'all probably don't remember Gen 6. The Gen 6, was they, uh, it was like six kids, right? Six boys, black boys. Talking about in New York? No, it was in um, Louisiana. So. I heard and the Gen 6 before. They, that white kid had hung a noose on the tree or something mm-hmm. to that effect. And, they got into it at the store, and they pretty much, you know, gave them what they what they asking for. Yeah. Well, they was facing life a lot of time in prison, and back then, uh, I don't know if y'all have heard of Michael Basden. Michael mm-hmm. Basden had a radio show, basically about like um, Steve Harvey. Yeah. And he, uh, what's yeah, the other they guy? He'd be on that show sometimes, right? Uh, they'd be talking about him or something. Michael, Michael, Michael Basden. Michael Basden. Yeah, yeah, Michael. He put it together, and man, I'm telling you, bro, it was something like from the six from the sixties. Mm-hmm. Remember Selma when they yep. were marching? When we got down there, there were so many buses and people from everywhere, you know, from California, New York, you know, Kentucky. But everybody, they asked to wear black, man. It, it was it was so beautiful, man. The yeah. energy that was there. So man. you don't feel, that's why I say you believe because you don't feel that energy, like right. people being solidarity and yes. together. Yes, and I honestly believe that if it wasn't for that um, rally, those, those boys would have went to prison. For the rest of their life. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I mean, we can do things if we just like just come together. together. Yeah, and we gotta put money into strength like, and numbers. the community. It's all about strength and numbers, though. Like if you, if, like I said, if all the NBA teams players came together, they would shut down the NBA. But they wouldn't do that. Why? Why we got enough people to start our own league? But we ain't got the infrastructure. You gotta just, understand that we don't have the information. I, I keep nah, saying you, that, but you can get again, it though. But there no, again, you remember when they had the Negro League? Yeah. You see, we man, we saturated some of those grades, man. Was, the, you know, we got the best athletes, but we, we got, got the best entertainers. Yeah. We got the best everything, yeah. and that's why it goes back was well, segregation better. We the goat, exactly. Work. Because you think about it, look at high schools now. Think about when certain high schools were separate. You know, just like in in Baseburg, you had BNL, and then you had Twin City. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, then they merged them together, right? You think about it. Who you think would have won out of football game if they played Twin City against Ben? It's an ben. easy thing. Twin City would have won. There you go. But who could give you the better education? Who had the better well, book? Uh-uh, uh-uh. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. I just did contrarian. I just did contrarian. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Man, <laughs> and, 
Hey, you got to, you know, you got to, you got to think about that. You, you got a lot of people who become famous athletes, and they might have went to a predominantly white university. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But what about your Benedicts? What about your South Carolina State? Your Allens? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I mean, a lot of people ain't talk about it. What what Benedict did? He went ten no. Football. Championship, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Making champions, making, making history. You D, know what I'm D2 saying? D two champ. Yeah, right? yeah. Is that the first time ever for them? Yeah, I think I yeah. think so. Yeah, That's big time though. Yeah, the coach came and turned the program around. Mm -hmm. Just, Just like kind of like what Dion, exactly. what Dion doing? Like, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. it's so um, refreshing to see black leadership take over and like do a good job or whatever. But I guess you know, we do have to Dion gonna have to lead though. He definitely have to lead because like just more money, more esteem at. Yeah, but he's not he's not doing it for the money. They what well, he did a million dollar contract and he gave five hundred back to the athletic department. But he said he yeah. definitely like he can't say he'll never leave. But why? Because like it's it's not even about the money he's gonna be making. It's about the money that could be poured into like the his kids. assistant it's, coaches and like everybody else. Like, yeah. like you said, like being the director of IT, That's being the head coach of a football team, you can yeah. bring in some other people NIL. that can like. You said what? what who? Is it, the NIL did? Yeah. Like that's what that come in and uh, like he for player. He, yeah. he ain't really focus about going to well. He done said it plenty of times. Yeah, time. like, and you got you got to look at it. You got to look at it too. Bad. His <laughs> all his kids go to that school too. Right. Yeah. So he able to be on campus no. with his kids while they in college. Right. One thing, <clears throat> one thing I heard. You know, if we look at like the offset thing, and uh, I mean not offset, take off. Take off. You look at the take takeoff thing, like Dion said a long time ago when he was, you know, um, hosting mm -hmm. on the Sports Network. He said, "Just because you make this money, you don't forget where you came from, but you can't always go back to where you come from." That's true. You 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 kind of got to separate yourself. Exactly. You know, instead of going back to the hood to celebrate with your boys, how about bring a select few of your boys? Out to see you, yeah, right. at a Lucha, at a Lucha lo location. You see what I'm yep. saying? Yeah, that's the and, truth, and the vibe would be totally different. You see what I'm saying? It won't be that rah rah. Yeah, they out of yeah. town kind. So like, you know, I'm chill. He brought me out. I'm yeah. chill. Like, Everything well, paid for. Everybody yeah. relaxing. Yeah, everybody having a good time. Like, cause you ain't had to spend no money. You ain't feeling broke. Yeah, you know? yeah. Cause poverty is a big thing. That's why people be angry. They be mad at themselves because they ain't got what they should mm -hmm. have. Yep. Right. Think, think about it. <clears throat> you live in Charleston, right? Yep. All right. Everybody know that he said every episode. So, <laughs> so when you when you go over to Isle of Palms, Mount Pleasant, Kiowa uh, Island, Kiowa Island, and stuff like that, how many check cashing places do you see? With? You don't see much. How many? It, and much. They don't see none. Really. There you go. You how many nice. title title owned places you see? None of them. See whole. How many liquor stores you see? I don't even think you. I don't know if I saw any. If you do see some of them, they like right beside the gas station, so they look real nice. The gas station. They got nice liquor stores because they, they drink. A, they drink a lot of wine. You got total wine. It's liquor stuff. That's exactly what I you saw. See what I'm saying? That's exactly what I see. You, you, they got. They got different names. Yeah. But we just got the red dot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We got check cash in place. We got to pay their loan place. We got title, title loan right place. The, right the road. You see what I'm saying? That's the difference in. Investing in the community, they put things in our community to keep us where they want us to be. Exactly, yes. in poverty. Yeah, and they meet up. I, I remember this was one day a regular, regular Tuesday night in Mount Pleasant, it was a, a strip mall, but it was a bunch of white women in this um building or whatever having some type of meeting. But like, it probably was a good meeting for whatever they was doing or whatever but they was coming together, having communication, networking. You just like I say, never know where the networking to take you. And that's why like I just want to be in the room with different people now because I know be different people can. Tell me about different people, and like I say, we can't. We've been around the same people, seeing the same people, talking to the same people. That's not gonna elevate. Like that. we want to get like politicians and stuff, like council members on. Like we want to have these type of dope conversations yeah, that right, we having right. today or whatever. Because right. like I don't think we really ever had like a deep, good ass conversation like this, like about like actually like improving life, things and like being life. black yeah. men and grown and like like, this. like I know germs got kids. Yeah. One of y'all got, got a daughter. You got a daughter. Okay. You got kids. Yeah, I got three. Three kids. Yeah. So if you on a job. Making thirty dollars an hour, right? Yep. And that's paying your bills, right? And you get a two dollar on the hour raise. What you doing with that two dollars? You gonna blow that? You spending that? Okay. What Why? You saying what you should do with it or what yeah. you gonna do with it? Yeah, what you should do with it. I mean, you should, you should try invest it. Yeah, all that two dollars. Invest you don't it need into it. what? Uh, you just you just working at it like a plant job or something now. So what you gonna invest it in? Stocks, real estate. No, first if you it's just don't know two, nothing, it's only two dollars an hour. Two dollars, but if you that's forty dollars a week. 
I yeah. mean, that's 40, he said, if you work 40 hours, that's yeah. 40 times two, that's $80 a week. Yeah. That's three hundred. So you can, only, you can only count for the 40 dollars. See, we can't depend on over, overtime. Ain't never promised, so you can yeah. only, only count say 40 for forty times two, so three twenty a month. Yeah. You you can buy some good knowledge with it, three twenty. Okay, but why not invest that extra two dollars an hour? Because you're paying your bills with the thirty dollars an hour, right? Mm-hmm. Why not invest that extra two dollars an hour to your four hundred one k? See, I feel different about four hundred one k though. <laughs> I feel four hundred one k is like <laughs> something people wait on, but I, I mean, it's a great thing to have. It's nothing against a four hundred one k, but I want to have access to my money when I want it. So I'm rather invest into the stock market, have okay. my money like okay, very you, liquid. But see, but see, the difference in you and me in my generation, we cooked on the stove. In your generation, cook the microwave. You want microwave results? Nah, I cook on the grill, slow cook. <laughs> <laughs> slow Choco. Cook. But see, you got to, you got to think about that. Like, like I know y'all grandma. You know, I've been knowing her since I was little. Oh, and no. and you, you got to think about it. Think about when you get her age, and you got to depend on just your social security and whatever you might have a retirement or whatever like that but think about it think about how much it costs to go to a doctor at that age yeah, yeah. and you so, have to go to the doctor so it's a difference when you might be thinking yeah i, I could have bought some amazon stocks with that three something you know what i'm saying mm. that that month but if you put but, that for the 401k exactly now <laughs> if you really want to get you know do like a raw or something like that, where you kind of, yeah, yeah, where you kind of compounds a little bit more, yeah, that's that's something. But you do want to do something that's more stable because you got to look for longevity. Yeah, yeah. Because at the at the same time, you don't want your daughter having to. you move in with your daughter when mm-hmm. you're sixty something. She moving me now. Nice. <laughs> 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 she did with you. Hey, some of the got to be reversed, right? Yeah, yeah. Maybe the two People do not think about the long term though. Like yeah, I say, life, real, though. life yeah. is a journey or whatever. And like, right. you, you I mean, be that's a, that's the safest, best plan. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm a risk taker. Yeah, but see, but, I did that when I was um at do it best well okay. HWI. Like I said, um, uh, you remember Prime America, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I was in Prime America, and um, they were selling insurance, which is had whole life versus term term life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, you could get a twenty year term for like I think it was like twenty dollars for hundred thousand dollar policy. Mm-hmm. At that particular time, I was a lot younger. Well, a whole life would have cost you like forty dollars, which mm-hmm. is double. Well, they want you you get the term and invest the twenty dollar difference in a pioneer fund, mutual fund. Like okay. And I was doing it. I, I was doing it, but not knowing, you know, coming from uh, my parents didn't know nothing about finance like that. You know, yeah. they just tried to do the best they can with raising us. But had I had the knowledge. I would have left my money in, but the, the uh, black money hit and the stock market fell. Mm-hmm. And I got scared. I won't give me my money. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? But just think if I'd have left that money and continued to do that oh my God. after that 20 years. Right. You the see? 20 year how that yeah. stock would have grew and like you just, money would just yeah. multiply. Imagine right. if y'all would have started, like, say, like investing in Apple in 2000. Right. Yeah. 22 years ago yeah. for you. 32 yeah. years ago, investing in Apple stock yeah. or something like or Call Amazon when it first started. Walmart. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Walmart. Simple Walmart, as that. When, when Walmart stock, I remember when Walmart stock was like $10, $15 a share at one time. I'm like, what you, you could have did? You bought 100 of them, and they were by probably about $150 right now. Well, trust me, man, time fly. Time fly by. So, you know, it ain't too late. You know, but yeah. I've, I've did some more investments and all, and, and, and I feel like I'm, you know, pretty good. But it's never too late because you might say, "Well, I should have did it back then. Mm-hmm. I should do it now." Yeah, just do yeah. it now. Start. Because it's, yeah. it's, it's yeah. never too yeah. late. Yeah, is that the best time to start? It's now, right? Yeah. No, the best time to start was twenty years ago. The second, <laughs> the second best time to start was right now. Right now. Uh, but I correct. always had this question correct. for the guest or whatever. It's like, well, y'all both. It's both questions for both of y'all. Tell me first, though, Gary. What was your? High, who was your high school crush? Ah, she married and gone. She married and gone. That was my high school. She married and gone. Yeah, yeah, she married and gone. See what you mean? She, she, she was. Uh, she passed away. Queen. No, no, she she lives in um, I think uh, Connecticut. Yeah. Connecticut. Yeah. What's you you, you want to say a name. name? You want to say a name? Nah, she everybody, married. Everybody she who married, knew, man. everybody who knew me in high school knew that you know. Okay, okay. Knew okay. Deborah, Deborah. Deborah. I Deborah. I shot at Deborah. I know <laughs> Deborah, man. Connecticut, what man. you you see more Connecticut? Ah, nah. <laughs> <laughs> How would you go? Yeah, I'm married now. 
Yeah. No, I'm just saying. High school. High school. I'm married. Yeah. Yeah. Nah, I'm married. He's scared. He's scared. I got to go home. He got to go home. Yeah. <laughs> I ain't going to lie. So, being married, you know, you, you the only married person. You married, Gary? No. no. You ever been married? Yeah. How many times? One. One time. Yeah. You learned from your married, first marriage. <laughs> How many times you been married? One. That's a great thing, though, like. So how long? You, you've been no, no. I've been married twice. You've been married yeah, twice, yeah, so you yeah. did it again. Yeah. So how long? I ain't never been married. I can't get the first one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. The first one. <laughs> <laughs> how long you been married this time? Man, why you ask me? <laughs> you gotta know this. This is this is. We put yeah. you on the spot. Yeah, 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 I'm, on that yeah I'm, supposed to, I'm supposed to know this. <laughs> Y'all trying to get me in trouble. How is, how is marriage? Like I said, I, 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 set you up. <laughs> soon as you've been married a long time. Up, yeah. I, I've been with my girl six, six years by, but we knew each other. We was in the same first grade class, so like, I want to get married. That's something I want to do, so I, I got to learn how to make marriage work, though. So tell me how marriage works for you. You're doing it's, it for the sake of time, so you know. Got to recover. Got to recover. It's, it's, it's a process, <laughs> but see, I married... The second time, somebody who I had been with since 98, 99. Oh, so, okay. Yeah. So you usually knew them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, it, it was like a, just a vibe there, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's hard for me to find a woman. I'm single out here. You're shallow, yeah. man. But marriage is, a, I mean, any any yeah. any relationship is a, is a give and take, you know? <laughs> you got to you gotta know, pick your battles. Uh-huh. That's the word, pick your battles. Most you know, some, some things ain't worth arguing over. Yep. Some things is is more easy to compromise with than 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 to argue. With. I think I'm too truthful. I just tell people the truth too much, and that can be a problem also. Well, you could be fishing in the wrong pond too. Yeah, I'm definitely fishing in you the know wrong what I'm pond. Saying? You you can't be I'm in fishing the in the pond with the brim if you're trying to catch a bass. Yeah, yeah, for real. Yeah, yeah, you can't be looking for a girlfriend when you're looking for a wife. And yeah, also, yeah, but, but, get but you but you can't be in the pun with the brim if you want the bass. You you know that the brim. He like the brim, man. He like he like he like he, 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 like, he, he a brim man. Yeah, 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 yeah. He, like, he like fishing for brim, but he want a bass. They be yeah, biting yeah. 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 He swears one not there. He swears one not there. The brim, man. Hell no, no. it's no bass yeah. with the brim. Yeah. He trying to catch a large mouth in the brim. Hey. Yeah. But really, I want that bass that's gonna like grow with me for the rest of my life. You feel me? But it's like it's hard to find that. I mean, you probably found it easy, you feel me? Like, once you do it, it's like, all right, it happened. But finding a woman that you want, especially when you're on the path you on, it's a hard, hard thing to do. Because it's hard to find somebody that can actually agree with the things I agree with. Like, I'm work, 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 trying to get work done, but I want to spend time with you also. Yeah. But it's like, I'm too truthful also. Like, I might tell a girl, you got a double chin. You got a double chin. I, hey, I'm sorry. You got a double chin. We're on FaceTime. Double. I saw a double chin. I can't help it. Yeah, but say it. Can't say the first thing on your brain because you got to think about other people's feelings get hurt. I know, right? Nah, because if I ain't saying it to bring you down, don't take it that way. Don't do that. Yeah. Don't do that. Kinda don't do that to me. Because you're going to do it to me in some other form. It might not be the same type situation or the same type conversation, but you're going to do it in some type of way. I got to take it. Yeah, I just take so, it. Yeah. Take like, it and scry. I how, always want to know. How about you, though, Gary? You got a lady friend? Yeah, yeah, I got a friend, Crystal. Y'all know Crystal. Do I know her? Yeah, I know Crystal. Because yeah, like uh, you be on um, with her at Limestone, the football right, game. Right, right. Okay, okay, okay. Mm-hmm. So, like, so just a friendship. You ever think about taking a chance to get married again? I mean, it's, it's possible. Like, yeah. Anything it is possible. possible. Right, right, right. <laughs> Right. German might get but married to a know, girl. Man. It's you, possible. You, first of all, like I said, you got to be on the same page. Man. Yeah. You know, I mean, around the clock, around the board, you know, for us, um, spiritually, you know, mm-hmm. um, economically. The raising whole nine kids. Yards, right? yeah. 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 Raising yeah. kids. Because, you know, you can't be, you know, pull them one way and they pull them another yep. way. It ain't going to happen. Financially. Financially, Financially too. too. So you got yeah. kids by more than one woman? Yeah, but by both of my wives. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Both of your wives or your wife and your ex-wife? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I just want to make sure that. <laughs> yeah, he, 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 he just cleaned it up for you. I just cleaned it up for you. Know? Yeah. I, I thought it's more like, a lot of people say it's the communication, but it's the comprehension of the communication yeah, that like, a, makes um like relationships go sour or whatever. Because I feel like a lot of people don't don't talk out their problems or whatever, and then yeah. it, it builds up, and then they feel like it explodes. And now yeah. you can't even repair it anymore because all those wounds got super deep. Got yeah. super deep, man. But before we get out of here, let's do a couple of thoughts. Right fast. Hey, we might got a new question in here. This this a segment where we like you know just say uh, if it's an old if it's an old question I want a new one. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it. Oh, how old were you when you started cursing? <laughs> well, 
my mom ain't gonna watch podcasts. Yeah. Uh, my sister might tell her though, but um, uh, maybe like 10, 11. 10, something. you old, huh? Yeah, yeah. I remember Miss Brenda caught me cussing. I was probably about seven. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we just cussed earlier. Like, not a lot of grown people now. I ain't like, started cussing until I went to White Nose in seventh grade. <laughs> you know, they, they, them kids, they, they, they was cussing like it was regular. So I'm like, I guess it's the time we start cussing too. <laughs> I know. I'd be like other kids. I knew all the Rudy Ray Moore jokes when I was 12 years old. 65 monkey and all that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Petey Wheat Straw. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Dolomite. Rudy yeah. Ray Moore, Dolomite. Yeah. It's classic. Old school, right? Yeah. 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 Dolomite. Yeah. Yeah. I watched a new one that was on Netflix, though, that came out a couple of years ago. Yeah. The Dolomite. That's what I was telling them earlier. We were talking on the phone. Manny was on here talking about Maple Street. Yeah. yeah like, he don't really remember Maple Street. Maple, Maple Street. Street. Yeah. You, you heard that, Manny. <laughs> thank you. You know, you, thank you, no really, Maple Street. Really. Gary, no Maple Street. Maple what, Street. What was the two clubs you was talking about on Maple Street? Oh, the Trash Pile and the Sunset. The trash, trash Pile. Tra- yeah, the trash, trash, trash Pile. Yeah. And the Sunset. Yup. He's That's where it went down there. Yeah, Chasing all. no women out there, you right. said. <laughs> <laughs> hey. A little hole in the wall, man. Yeah. Yeah. On, off the sunset, I know it's sunset there because that's off the little forest, ain't it? It's close to the forest. Nah, sunset. That's oh. where um Keita don't stay though. Okay. Oh, the rock. The rock. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, the yeah, white okay. building. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I know that. I know. And that. then the trash pile was, was actually on Maple Street. At the, at the end, down there. On the, yeah. on the big building. Yeah. By where um, what's his name? Uh, Tater. Okay. Yeah. I know yeah. what you're talking about. Yeah. And then the baseball field was on the corner down yeah. there. And y'all used to play baseball, ain't it? Yeah. 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 You play baseball too. Yeah. They used to play baseball. Yeah, so. I played. Um, you said you played among the amp. But yeah, you I played with the Alexa Eagles. So that's no, what I remember. The no, Lester we play, I played with Rich Frank. Then I ended up playing a little while with the Blue Flame. Yeah, baseball was big yeah. for you growing up, yeah. right? Oh like, yeah, oh, baseball yeah. was huge in the black community. Man, the, any given Saturday, Sunday, they would pull up to a baseball game, and that was it. Mm-hmm. A bunch and of black I, people that I, played I, baseball. Yeah, that was a party. That's crazy because yeah, I mean, it's nothing like that now. Yeah, yeah, nobody plays baseball. I think softball kind of yeah. put a damper on, on, on when when softball came out and became popular. A lot of people stopped. Playing baseball, no, transitions to softball. softball. Right. Softball used to be lit. Bright Road yeah. used to be lit. Uh, that, that's still out too. Saluto too yeah. at the park. They still mm. play down there? I don't, I don't, I don't know. know. I ain't been to Saluto on a Sunday. <laughs> yeah, that yeah. was saying like, it, that used to be something religiously you did. Monday and Friday, Friday yeah. we played, we went in Bright Road and played softball. Yeah. I even had some high catches. I was the number one pick out there. Yeah. I probably the GOAT. Yeah, okay. Shout out to all the league coaches us. and everything. Simp. Simp. Okay. Yeah, yeah. 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 We, we know um, the Lily in baseball, like Roley, he on, um, 40, Malley. Yeah. They they really do the most of the um the, the league, little league football in baseball. So yeah. shout out to them, though. They they handle that. Because, like, yeah. they did the job that it's, it's work. It's work. Right, it's work. Right, right. Because when, when I was in baseball, I used to help out with the T ball team and the coach pitch team. Yeah. You know, but. um. You know, if I had the time, though, I might be one of them parents that I just coach my son through. I just, you know, let him be a star. You know, I, I might be one of them kind of coaches. You know, <laughs> if I want to have a son, you yeah. got, you got girls, boys. I got two, two daughters and a son. Okay, yeah. eighteen, son, fifteen, how, and nine. So how old is your son then? Nine. So nine. He, he got, yeah, he young, what, what he love to do? Game. Like, game. <laughs> game, but no he, sports yet. Yeah, he's his 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 um ten U team made it to the playoffs. They got knocked out, you know. Yeah. But they, what position yeah. you play? Linebacker. Linebacker. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. A little yeah. linebacker. I hear a little Roku and Smith. Mm-hmm. Man. <laughs> so I'm trying to. I want to have me a son. Not saying I need to have a son, like, but. You got to find you a woman first, though. <laughs> you got. You man saying he want a son. Like, no, I'm, gotta, saying, I'm saying you got to speak it, believe, receive it, right? I want a son. He said he's attracted me, duh. He said he's trying to get him a woman, or he said he's trying to speak it, believe, and receive it. Yeah, right? no. Attract, like, law of attraction. Being single though, like being single is fun, but it do get lonely, you know, sometimes, you know, because yeah, like it's, you got I got my daughter, yeah, yeah, but like it get lonely because you, you had you could talk to different women, but right. just say like you know, you can, you can say you smash twenty women. If you don't like none of the twenty women, what did that mean to you? But which one out of twenty you having that intimate conversation with though? Yeah. All twenty on suck. Yeah. Just say all you, twenty on suck. You just burn energy. Yeah. Yeah, you burn That's energy, but I saying all twenty like I don't talk to twenty women. Like who got time for that? But I'm just saying for example or whatever. Like you so you want to find somebody that you can actually like build a family with. Now at this age, 
Because they in my 20s, just, yeah, I'm just trying to smash it down. A legacy. Yeah, a legacy, legacy, really. Yeah. But you got to find that right princess to build that legacy with. At this, yeah, like I said, at this princess. right age of 32 that we at, man, we gotta, you got to sift them out more, man. You yeah. got to get your But, but you got to, I guess I got to shoot my shot, boy, too, to, to find something to stick. Maybe, yeah, a little bit. But at the same time, you know, at this point, what you attract is what you attract. So what you like is what you like. So no, I mean, but I, how about what you attract ain't always what you want, though. So you clearly you got to change something. Uh-huh. But you want what you want. Yeah, I want what I want. <laughs> yeah, I need what I want. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, but Jeremy like Corvettes, but yeah. we, all of all three of his kids ain't gonna fit in there. Yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, so yeah. see, you gotta have that kind of mindset. Yeah, yeah Corvette a nice car, but Man. we ain't all gonna fit in there. I need a pretty sacrifice. I need a pretty faith. I need good conversation. I need you to look good. You like to have. was that two you, looking good thing. You, you like to have. You don't. You don't need it. You like to have. Like it. To have. I need to have. <laughs> have. <laughs> that is true. Like I say, you, 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 you gotta start off with somebody oh, that's gonna hold you yeah. down, though. Yeah, like yeah. I say, that ain't something I need. Yeah. But if you find the right person that that supersedes what you need to what you want, you feel me? Okay. Yeah, that's the perfect what if, thing. What if you? What if you? What if you find that 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 ten that's Everything across the board a ten, but she don't want to work and help you build a legacy. She's she's not a good parent. So oh, that's that's you, a good ass question right there. <laughs> Eject those seed old man. You, 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 you see what I'm saying? She look, the she good parent on is, your own. That's an awful. That's an yeah. ugly woman right there. Yeah, yeah. she ain't yeah. a good parent. That's an ugly woman. Yeah. She look good on your own, but she don't want to take care of kids. Her and your child can't get along. You see what I'm saying? She want to go drink every a night. A lot of a lot of people deal with deal with that. Yeah, you that's something. That's that's something bad to deal with. Yeah. Because like you you deal with that in life, and you're like man, like you ugly now. Because like, like I say, it's like um women say about dudes that don't take care of their kids. Like I don't even want to be with a dude that don't take care of his kids. Because if we have a kid, you ain't gonna take care of our kid. Probably you probably just uh, just leave the kid or whatever. Yeah. You know, and it's the same sense or whatever. Yeah. You say you like to invest. Buying a house is an investment, right? That's just, mm-hmm. that's gonna benefit you and your kids. Because once you pay that house off. You can leave that house to your kids, or you can use it for to rent it out or whatever, and build you another one, whatever mm-hmm. you want to do, right? So what if you is 10, right? But you trying to buy a house, but she wants you to keep her in a new car every two years. Mm. She ain't, she ain't a good teammate. Plan. That one says all about being a teammate. Yeah. There you go. I, I guess you. that would be probably the number one thing. <clears throat> I want to find somebody that could be a good teammate. That there look you. good, they ain't going to be a good teammate. There you go. If it, she ain't got to be a 10, but if she a nine, she need to be a good teammate. <laughs> but if she a T, she ain't got to be the best of teammates. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> just, be ball, just be a good mom. Just be a good mom. Just want to take care of your kids. <laughs> I beg you to put out. She look at them leggings. Uh, yeah, let's <laughs> sit right. Yeah, yeah, just, you, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know. All right, my bad, wrong one. I'm gonna erase that. <laughs> get, get another question. One more right. question before we get out of here. <clears throat> Dran ain't never answered when he started cussing. Shit, I don't really remember, honestly, but probably. Mm, you do I'll probably say eight, nine, something yeah. like that. Yeah. Something like that. You, you look. What? Oh, <laughs> that's it. That's it. <laughs> okay, this is a good question right here, though. What are three things on your bucket list? Man, first is I, I want to go to. Uh, the mother country, Africa. Mm-hmm. I definitely want to um, venture out there. Um, what else? Bucket list. I did, buddy. Yeah, <laughs> did it all. I did it all. We'll, we'll let you do the last two first, but let me ask you this one question. Do you believe you're from Africa? Or do you, or do you believe you, your origin start in America? Well, physically my origin start, of course, is in America, but I, I feel like, you know, my ancestors... Was originally from from Africa. I feel like I'm gonna find out you're Black American, and like my ancestors started here. We built America. Well, well, what's your name? Jones. <laughs> so, so you, you see any um, Mexicans? Or uh, you see any Chinese with name Jones yeah, Smith or Johnson Jones, or Bunch? Yeah, nah, yeah. yeah. So, 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 yeah. what do you think? They were Rodriguez, Santiago. Okay. Yeah. 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 But we're the only one that carries your what? Your slave master's name. That's it. You see. Because you, you come from their plantation, that you, you took on their name. Yeah, I, I, I changed my last name, so I ain't with you. I'm with X. <laughs> <laughs> That's true, though. But I mean, I still feel like I just hate when, like, on the testing back in the day, like, I'm really, I don't have any kind of like, nothing, nothing puts me in Africa. Nothing says I'm an African. 
I'm a black American. Because Elon Musk an African. Well, I feel that we all came from Africa, black and white, and yeah. everybody migrated over here. I mean, you start mm -hmm. looking, even though the, the history books are a little twisted, <laughs> but you, you, you kind of got the, you know, um, eat the eat the meat, spit out the bones. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Everybody migrated. I mean, because Africa is one of the richest con continents. Mm -hmm. You see, got the continent all the resources. Yeah, it's got all the resources. You see what I'm saying? So, but why, yeah. why when they show it on They show TV, the poverty. Yeah. You never see that. Yeah. So they'll never let you believe that that's a rich country. Mm -hmm. You see the kids with the big bellies and the yeah. flies around. They eating grits or whatever out the bowl, you know. One eight hundred feet the children. Yeah. Okay. Why? Why? What's What's wrong? Why you can't have lions and giraffes over here? Just wild like they in the Serengeti. Because you only it's see a them. City in, you only here. see them. In, you only see them in the zoo. But they got city in Africa. I guess like it's more land in Africa. It's huge. It's, it's yeah. like I say. It's, a, it's like I say. Yeah. It's Serengeti. Yeah. It's look the Sahara. The, look at the state of Texas. It's huge, but it ain't everything. They got a lot of animals, though. Feral hogs. Yeah, yeah, but you got mountain lions. The the wild animals because no because this is this is not the chosen land. It's not full of resources. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. It, so. it ain't like we look look at the Lion King and like all them animals. You can't see that over here. Yeah. But they do got wild horses in yeah. over here though. You probably know that, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's wild horses like in um mid like Midwest. My it's mountain lions in Houston. I believe it's 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 bears. I mean, it's a lot of animals. It's in bears America. in South Carolina. Exactly, yeah. it's mm -hmm. crocodiles, yeah. alligators. You see yeah. them signs all up in Charleston. Yeah. Like, yeah. be well now. You yeah. get yourself bit now. Mm -hmm. But like, it's, it's animals over. Here. I understand that like, Africa is probably the place where everything started at. But I just feel like with the generations or whatever, it's like now it's time to say we just black American. Yeah. But like you said, you had two more lists on your bucket list. You can't think of no more. Nah, I can't. Sure. <laughs> but same with him. Africa. I like to go to Africa. You know. Um, I definitely like to go out and see the YM, I mean, you know, do an African tour or something like that. Um, not necessarily bucket list, but before I die, I like to see all my kids, you know, become adults and be successful, yeah. you mm -hmm. know. Just that's, see them. I that's, got you. you know. Um, that's a blessing. Become a millionaire, you know. Mm -hmm. Put that on your bucket list. You know? yeah. Million. Oh, Billion. Yeah, 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 yeah. I like to fly a plane, too. Yeah. yeah. Fly it. Yeah. I want to be a pilot. What make you want? <laughs> I was talking to Janet about this. Somebody like going towards like a rich brain, like they got a, like a helicopter or something. They be flying from like there to Charleston. Probably like a 30 minute ride, you know. But think about it, like you can you jump on that flight. If you go pilot, you can make that flight anytime yeah. you want. Yeah. Well, um, Oswald, they used to fly their plane all, all the time. The house move, Oswald. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, yeah? Yeah, they used to fly their plane all the time. You know, it but might see, be them. See, see, back in our generation, that used to be a popular popular thing. People flying little Cessnas and stuff like that. Well, they had the small plane that I was driving for in Rich Spring. Mike yeah. Adamick. Yeah. Remember he had his yeah, plane. Yeah, that's, that's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. He crashed. Matter of fact, he got a kid right behind his house. Yeah. But, yeah. He crashed the plane behind his house? Uh -huh. Yeah. The guy, okay. So he had made it back home and then crashed? On, on he a got a script. Wrong way script right behind yeah. the house. So. The time you coming into Rich Spring is the house on the right sits way used up. Used to be a big big house off the right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You had a landing script back there? Matter of fact, Behind, okay, you know, you know when y'all coming out of Baseburg Police Station? Yeah. That little building that's on on the left past that 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 that's the the guy that got the helicopter, right? He used to fly that over Baseburg all the time. This is like his second or third helicopter. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. He going to um Charleston because I believe they said like he worked at Charleston or something. Oh, he okay. live in Charleston, yeah, so yeah. he like to drive back sometimes. Like think about it. Mate, that's life right there. Yeah, that's life. That's money. Yeah. yeah. That's well. Yeah, I'm gonna take my um Helicopter to Charleston today, right? Man. If I be back, man, I'm gonna go to Walmart and Charleston. Man, I, I would love to have a kind of capital to be able to take my whole family on vacation because that's the only way they're gonna go on vacation. Like my grandma and have a great time. She turned 70 this year or whatever. She's never been on the airplane before. Wow. It's like, you know, you like, you that's, You might be nervous of that, you might be scared of that, but it's like, that's the thing that you just need to feel in your yeah, life. Like, exactly. being on the airplane. Like, I, I just took off because like, I told like, we we went to Vegas maybe about three, four years ago, but like, we was in South Carolina, obviously, went to Charlotte on the airplane. Then we flew to Nevada, and then the next day we went to um, California. So we was in four states in less than 24 hours. And I'm like, that's experiences right there. That's something I can tell my kids, tell my grandkids 50 years from now. And like, just taking flights, just, just explore. Because this world is the only world we're going to be able to live in. So you better see it as much as you can. Yeah. Like we saw that crack, you know, over there, like the where the plates come together in California. Yeah. yeah. I forgot what that crack called, but it's a big old crack. Um, you can see it. San Andreas fault line. Yeah, fault yeah, line. Yeah. You can literally see the crack 
uh, in the mountains, there's a big old crack going yeah. down the mountain because, like, we had uh, drove from Vegas to LA or whatever. And so, like, that's something like most people in this world don't experience. Like, yeah. only like points. They, they see the Hollywood sign on TV, or like, you know, but, but seeing, they don't see it in person. Yeah. Like, I, saw that, right. I know how you get, like, I don't know how you quote unquote, get there, but I took a route to get there. I yeah. saw like all the Hollywood hills. Like, you just ride by somebody's house, there's a Lamborghini sitting on the side. Yeah. Like, just outside, like a regular life. Like, and that's the rich people. Like, you see, like, where Will Chamberlain stayed at. You see, like, where Puff Daddy stayed at. Like, where his yeah. Like Forty million dollar mansion and stuff like that. Like this is real wealth. Like this is black wealth. This is people to aspire to. It's like I wish it could be more people, but I mean, you know, they're the chosen, choose chosen few. I guess. What's your bucket? That's another yeah. thing. You know, as drivers, you get to see a lot of places. Yeah, mm-hmm. traveling. You know, I've seen Shea Stadium. You see, um, the stadium going through um, Chicago up there. Yeah, mm-hmm. y- y'all remember uh, the good times? Good times. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You can see these buildings, yeah, you know, yeah, the like, like, look wow, just like that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So Coming easy. through Pittsburgh, you see how the interstate runs right beside Hinesville. Yeah, um, yeah, we saw the Bel Air house, the family, um, oh, Prince of Bel Air. We, we, yeah. we saw that house. It's close. To you like, can you can rent that house out now. They got a they got a section. Yeah, on the on the house that you can you can go out there and rent a section. Oh, yeah? Of, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? This world is so big, and that's why I say it. people just they so small minded as saying just stay in their certain sick circumstances. But like, if you really just try. You really can do a lot in this world. I can tell you be on the road because you like you know a lot about YouTube and that's the way to like to learn about YouTube yeah. and like listen to podcasts. Cause yeah. you be on the road like I need something to entertain me because yeah. the music get repetitive, oh, right? Well, I mean, you ain't learning that from the music. Yeah, you see, you yeah. Know what I'm saying you ain't learning that from the music. I very rarely listen to music. I'm always you know trying to get that knowledge. From mm-hmm. I don't know. You guys ever heard of Papa Duck? Papa Duck. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely check him out. Though. How you spell it? Is it YouTuber? P A P A. P A P A. On uh, on YouTube. Papa P A P A P A. Papa. 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 Yeah. Is this Papa? Yeah. Papa yeah. Duck. Papa Duck. Papa Duck. Yeah. Duck. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, he yeah. Cause he he man he he constantly on it you know for us how people are trying to come up mm-hmm. and, and I'm sure you probably can get a lot of ideas from him as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Listen to fifty one fifty. I I listen to it a little bit not not real I ain't got into it. See Corey, my favorite comedian, so I love uh, Corey. Hope okay, so okay, yeah, yeah, I yeah. I I, I, I like check it out like when I see um something come through my YouTube yeah, timeline, clip or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, a clip, and he got somebody that kind of draw my interest yeah. that he going in about like when he went about Vivica Fox yeah. and all kind of stuff like that. He going on somebody but, um, every week. So what's your favorite podcast you you tune into every week? Navy Black. Appreciate it, man. Appreciate, appreciate it, man. Yeah. We, we just try, try to, to be consistent. Yeah. Try to be better, man. We can try to give you more better. Try to give you better episodes. We try to get better and bigger guests. But other than that, God, we appreciate. It. We definitely appreciate y'all support though, because like we just need, I need that to make me keep going. Um, Roland Martin keep me up on a lot of news. I He's like a bleak, 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 bleak. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but 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 he actually you know like I say with anybody you eat the meat spit out the bones. Mm-hmm. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So he he's always up to date on the on the latest news. You know Roly what I'm saying? Poly. So yeah. you know. What's the young guy, man, that that um started the school out there in Athens, Georgia? I know you're talking about uh, like King something. Right. Yeah. Right. That's uh-huh. what kind of turned me against Roland because he was trying to downplay the kid. He had him on interview him, and he was, you know, the dude. I think he's like 21 years old. Yeah. 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 Roland tried to downplay yeah. Dr. Umar too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I mean, he's like, he the boule. Yeah, he yeah. part of the boule. They yeah. part of that up there and stuff that yeah. they want to tell black people what to do instead of like you know yeah. coach black people what yeah. to do. But like I, but like I say, you 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 eat the meat, spit out the bones. It's like I use him for keeping me up to date on mm. what's going on. Like mm-hmm. a lot of times, the people that he have on, I hate to call people stupid, but they be stupid. Mm-hmm. You know, you know what I'm saying. So they be going back and forth about you know stuff that that's. They just trying to get views mm-hmm. and likes. You know what I'm saying? They not they not really. They ain't really speaking tr- truth to power. Well, they not tr- really trying to settle the issue. That's okay. that's out there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah. like so like rolling probably a podcast you listen to on a weekly basis. No, no, no. Okay. No. So like, my favorite podcast is the Brilliant Idiots, which has had Charlemagne the Guy and Andrew Schultz. It's like you know who Charlemagne the Guy is, right? Yeah. So yeah. like I've been listening to this podcast since it started, probably yeah. in 2013. But like they got a. He just talk about a lot of culture stuff and like just you know stuff. He, he wanted to be the podcast. Yeah, he be yeah. going through stuff in real like you know popping a list stuff like him and yeah. Kanye going back and forth. So like you hear Charlamagne on the Breakfast Club or whatever, but like you know if you hear him on his podcast, you hear so much more of who he really is. Yeah, I'm gonna have to check him out on the podcast because you know I do listen. to yeah, uh, check out the podcast. Breakfast Club on YouTube. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, the podcast is a smooth podcast. I like yeah. the podcast. Yeah, it's like one of the longest running, one of the biggest. I like sports. <clears throat> 
Bill Simmons, like he on, he he with the Ringer, where he owned the ring. He used to work for ESPN, but he owned the Ringer, and they signed with Spotify like last year, for like two hundred million dollars. Like he he a big time, but they have a sports a podcast and network, and like they talk about they be insiders almost. Yeah. So you get a good information for them too about sports because he already connected. Yeah, exactly. he, know, he know he know everybody. Yeah, he know exactly. everybody. Yeah. Like Ryan Rosillo, you probably don't heard about him before. He's worked for ESPN, but he worked under his network. Like Colin Carher, yeah, he worked for Fox now, but he own his own podcast network too. Like I say, that's what that's the new way of getting money now yeah. on the network because I say a lot of people like I say truck drivers you don't want to hear music all day but like if you can wake up on a Sunday on a Monday morning after the football games and play today and listen to people talk about football you're going to be interested because yeah. like I just watch football I want to hear other people break down what they saw like they talk about betting and all type yeah. of stuff and it's like uncensored it's like it's all it's not radio it's podcasting yeah. so it's like it's like it's no really like you know ass See, and stuff. a lot of, a lot of times I don't get into the sports um podcast I just kind of look at like a lot of the highlights, yeah. you know, and stuff like that. Because a lot of people be biased, yeah. you know. So he buy, I, he yeah, 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 yeah. So I, you know, <laughs> yeah, he yeah, biased. Yeah. But it'd be funny because he's a homer. I love hearing people as homers because, like, you hear the most biased people that just, just hurt Cooper Cup. Mm-hmm. Like, they true. Cooper Cup just got hurt. Mm-hmm. Ooh, leg. But yeah, but yeah. what you got another question? But what else y'all got to say? I I do have these two questions for y'all. Y'all got something to say? But I one question is who y'all think we should have on this platform that like take our platform to another level. Me locally, locally, oh. or anybody that you know that like you know just like give us an idea like something like, like statewide. Yeah, if, if I saw them in your pocket, I like oh I'm really I'm ready to hit the button and tune in. I want to hear that story. I want to hear what they talking about. Yeah, I don't know. Hmm. That's a that's a good question. It's, a, it's you know actually it's somebody who you know people want to hear their story. You told us about a comedian from something. Oh, a Shula King. I mean. You know, um, life of Ricky. You say life of Ricky. He's a Ricky. he's a YouTuber. Yeah. You know he um, he follows out out a lot of the racing. You know, mm-hmm. big rim racing and everything. Um, G Dog eight hundred three. Um, I know who that is. Don't master right from originally from Orangeburg, but he's in Charleston now. Shopping in Charleston. Um, he's see. like cars. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and I would like to get some some of the local guys who made it. You know, we got um, the uh, two guys in Johnston. Um, what's what's the guy's name? I think one of them played with the Cowboys. Yeah, you talking about um, Jacob Hamilton? Jacob Hamilton, Hamilton. Hamilton. Yeah. correct. Yeah, I like, I'd like to get some some cats yeah, like that who, be dope. who made it out. What about the Coco? Yeah, Coco Hiller was okay. pretty good. Yeah, I would, I would. even um, what's his name from baseball? Ed Ed, Ed McDaniel. Right. Yeah. yeah. I was like, yeah, that'd be dope. That'd yeah, be dope. dope. Bring him out of nowhere. Cause people, fact, we, I talked to Ty Irvin last week. You remember Ty Irvin had with the USC? I, I talked yeah. to him. We got to get Ty on. Yeah. That'd be dope because, like, thinking about the network and the connects he had. Did y'all ever USC. get um, Sherman on? No, nah, we ain't got him on yet. We talked yeah. to him. We got to get him on still, though. He talked like, to it'd him. be dope, too, though. Yeah, he got to come on. Cause I did a lot of research for him, so whenever he do, we do have that conversation. I'm ready to have a good conversation. Right. He did a lot for our own school. Okay. Yeah, a lot of stats. A lot of stats. Yeah. Yeah. Big stats. Yep. Put that's, a lot of that's That's what y'all think about this, you know. Like I was saying in the barber shop, you know, you got a lot of people out there to get that star beside their name, right? You know, they they're a star player, right? Mm-hmm. But it's a lot of people out there with better stats than a star than a person that got a star because they might have went to a two A school, yep. or one A school, mm-hmm. but they got better they got better stats. So I always argue stars don't mean that stats mean stats mean everything. Yeah, yeah. in some situations, I guess it's like it's just what you looking for in that player, or whatever. Yeah. Because some sometimes the stats don't mean that. Yeah. Cause like you just had a, a sorry team and you just were dominating everybody. It's, it's, it's and you exactly. were putting up like empty calories, really. Well, yeah, but I feel like the stars. Me, in my opinion, I feel like stars mean a lot because stars can like they they bring the best vibes. Cause like you feel like I got a guy that can take one eighty yard easy. But if you got a team like a methodical team, you feel like okay, we discipline and everything. But the stats we're gonna we're gonna make stuff happen. We're gonna make turnovers and all that stuff. Now you need some electrifying stuff that's really gonna take your team to another level. Cause I like stars. I feel like stars, like I say, Aaron Rodgers or whatever. Like I mean, not say this year or whatever, but like he can really turn a team to like a, a average team to like a fifteen and one team because like he'll star. So what you think about Deshaun? I, 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 I Deshaun ain't that, showed that yet. Yeah, he ain't played in two years. So I ain't gonna say about <laughs> next season, but I just don't believe a man can come in, miss the whole season last year, and miss most this season this year and like, be on. Like he right back to his You need reps. You need reps. It don't take much. He played in the old state of South Carolina, so I mean, uh, what that mean? He's an athlete. Hmm? Yeah. Greatness. Greatness? Yeah. Oh, 
Yeah. You a Clemson fan also? You, you knew where he was at when he was he Me? No, 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 no. He was already, you know, he was there. We were getting massages. <laughs> but why, why, why do y'all think that the Texans, well, I ain't going to say the Texans, the owner set, set him up? I mean, obviously, he wanted to get traded. Yeah. So they, it's, it's, they set him up, definitely. It's, exactly, because yeah. how convenient it is that the lawyer that brought all these women in these cases live in the same neighborhood as the owner. Yeah. How convenient that is. Yeah, that's right true. The road. I definitely believe it's a spear campaign that did it to him, but I ain't going to say he wasn't being that kind of nasty boy because in life, if, yeah, you're, nasty not, boy. if you're not putting yourself in those situations, you, nobody can't even claim that if you're not really living that way. Is if you out here, you doing something. You, you just got some shenanigans going on. Is that NFL huh? football player? A lot of them get massages. But I'm talking about since Sean massages. Watson. Like, see, you move he, your hand a little lower. He, he just got to stop turning over. Just get them back massages. Exactly. Deep, you know. Now you turn it over. Yeah, now you got that say. All, all that little blood pressure <laughs> that same spot. You tell somebody to roll that blood pressure out. Hey man. Hey, I, I used to work. I used to work with a cat. He truck, truck. Oh, man, I shouldn't say this because somebody might see the podcast. Put his business out there. <laughs> but he. He went to school, yeah. learned how to do massages and stuff like that. And he was telling me a lot of stuff. And that massage world different, I you know. It, it's it's different. It's Y'all different. ain't saw these you people. You ever had a massage? Yeah, yeah. You, but you what? never happy in it? <laughs> 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 I was about to ask the same question. No happy in it? <laughs> Robert <laughs> Kraft over here? <laughs> but yeah, I ain't, I'm, I ain't never had a massage before. But I do see like people on the internet where men... Giving these women massages and not giving them happy and like boy, that's very less. That's, that's a good they, job, right? That's they, there you go. If you if you I'm really get, do it, it. get into your craft for that massage, you know, and I'm speaking off what he told me now. Yeah. It's you, you learn the human body. It's pressure points in the in oh, the human yeah. body, things that Please. you know you know it'll turn. You know, I heard y'all talk. You know, you know y'all say Jeremy, you know, three minute man. You know, no, he said he said he, 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 he said yeah. he has never ejaculated before fifteen minutes. Oh, okay, Jim. Who said oh, it? Right. One of y'all say y'all three minute man, three good minutes. I got three good minutes. Okay, three good minutes. <laughs> three, good minutes three good minutes. So here we here we first round fight. I might so, be not that. So if you if you learn some of them pressure points, you know what I'm saying. You know, you can make that three minute workout. Yeah, 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 yeah. Three minutes for you. You know. Feel like thirty. Rest, yeah, there you go. Hey, there you go. There hey, you go. There that's you a both words, ain't it? There you, go. <laughs> you learn something new every day. I'm trying to learn. Oh, you know, please, boy. You huh? want to get pleased? Please be. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> whoa, whoa, God! He felt. He felt that one, boy. God, no. <laughs> but, I'm gonna bleep myself. But hey, tell me, tell me this though. On five years from now, because like I said, we got a lot of life, life to live now. But five years from now, we all trying to be at. Go ahead, first card. Just trying to be a better version of myself. Um, you know, um, continue to build my legacy with my kids. You know, you know my family. Um, that's all I'm. That's all I'm looking for. You know, everybody, everybody want to have have the world. You know, yeah. everything in it. But you know, having the world and everything in it comes with problems too. What? So you know. I like I like my little stress free life. You peaceful. know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's That's so tight. I, I don't have it's a peaceful. kid yet, but it's so cool. Like his um daughter's birthday or this week or whatever. It's like just seeing everybody put her on the snap or whatever. Like really, it's like like I say, I remember when he said he told her, but she was born or what. I mean, she with him was pregnant, which is his baby mama. Yeah. Then seeing her born, just seeing her whole life come through, it's like whoa. Like, like I say, because like, obviously we twin, we've been together our whole life or whatever. So yeah. Like it's so cool and interesting. Like. Oh my God! Look at her go older, or whatever. Like, ah oh man, like this. I'm getting older. She getting older. And like at some point in time, she's just gonna be this grown little yeah. girl. She ain't even gonna be a grown little girl. But she's just gonna be a grown girl. Yeah. And I'm gonna be an uncle still. So he's pretty yeah, dope. Yeah. Was at the hospital at the same time. Yeah, yeah. Same right, same time. Six, just, birthday was on uh, what? Ten. Ten, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah that is <laughs> that is that is right. Cause yeah, yeah. Cause I saw you post your your boys and and then. Uh, Right after, yeah, yeah. same good, right. Good I, I, baby spot, your daughter with little spot, the spot. That's our little spot, spot. Yeah, spot yeah. Thing we, we, made shirt, yeah. we made shirts. We made shirts. I thought so. I thought so. Bro. I didn't know. I thought so. Bro. <laughs> Hello, birthday yeah, squad. You saw, you saw, yeah, I saw. I, I, I should have put the pictures out there. Hello, birthday squad, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. birthday game. But I thought you, your kids had a birthday party on last Sunday yeah, or whatever. Yeah, like, um, stars and stripes. Mm-hmm. Stars and stripes. They turned five or whatever. You know. Daddy five going on man. thirty, man. Five, it's crazy. Yeah. They too grown. So I know you feel like that about your like you got a nine year old. You said fifteen, eighteen year old. Yeah, yeah, like it's like eighteen years went by fast, right? Like yeah. I remember you was born. Yeah, 
I used to wipe you. your butt. Ah, that's how I be. But go yeah. ahead, Gary. Tell us what you um trying to do in five years. Five years. Um, I got three grand. So you know, um, got grandkids out yeah, here. Yeah, I got three grand. You don't look yeah. nowhere. <laughs> Old man has some grandkids. Yeah, yeah. I'm up there, bro. Yeah, I got a, a four-year-old, a two-year-old, and no, oh, I got two and a five-year. Oh yeah, pop, younger pop. yeah, yeah, oh, pop, yeah. Pop. But um, I yeah, I, just, I want to maybe um get some more trucks. I've owned two trucks before, mm-hmm. so I may want to get some more trucks. Maybe a couple box trucks mm-hmm. and stuff, you know. Just leave some type of legacy for them. Yeah, you know, so they definitely. they won't have to start. You know where I started. From scratch. Right. They mm-hmm. have some. You know something already there for them. Yep. And I think that's what that's what happened to you know, our people a lot of time. You know when we coming up, we got to scratch and scratch to try to to build somewhere. Whereas on the other side, their parents and grandparents Can't already all the way out. Right. They when they graduate high school, they got mm-hmm. you know fifty hundred thousand dollar checks. Already to get started with, you know? they starting off. So, above so, so you, so you, you guys say your um daughter's eighteen. You believe in like kicking your kids out when they turn eighteen or twenty one? Mm-hmm. No, no. I believe in charging your kids rent though, and okay. that's and 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 that's not eighteen. She just started freshman year. She went against the grain. She going to USC. She a gang cop. <laughs> so, hey, so, but hey. she getting an education. Yeah. She she want to be a nurse. nurse they yeah, got they yeah. got they got a she good program. program so yeah, yeah, yeah. So I ain't gonna. You don't know nobody, Jerry. Hey. I didn't know nobody. I know about yeah. that. So, so you stay over there. But you know, I always tell her. Matter of fact, I just told her last week. You know, um, as long as you're in school, you know, we get we got you. Oh yeah. You know what I'm saying? But if you want to do your own thing, then you got to pay rent. You 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 a tenant now. Exactly. That's you, true you though. See, you see what I'm saying? Perspective. You know, sometimes. Sometimes, like Gary was saying, mm-hmm. you know, if you if you don't put things in place, you handicap your kids. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I don't want her to be 25, living in my house, or just, you know, she, she was supposed to be going to school to get a nurse. She didn't graduate. Mm-hmm. I mean, become a nurse. She didn't graduate, and she just wanna, you know, Parlay at go work house. at work at Dollar Tree. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Hang out with a friend. Nah, you go pay. You, go pay <laughs> you gotta make money. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It yeah. To be, yeah. It's and, easy though. A lot of times. You know, we as parents want our kids to have better than we have. Yeah. So it's it, you got to you got to be careful there, because it's easier to, to spoil them, so to speak. Because mm-hmm. you know, like I say, you want them to have things that, that you, you didn't have. have. Nice thing, but at the same time, you got to watch out. School ain't for everybody. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of people, you know, precious kids to go to school, go to school to do what? Most people go to school to do what? Just party half of them. No, no, not all that. But if they ain't right the intention, they go to try to get a degree yep. mm-hmm. to get a what? A job. A good a job. job. Yeah. You know? Yep. But it, so but it, we need to, you know, start to trying to teach our kids to be entrepreneurs. Create your own job. Yeah. Create your own business. But, but if the parents didn't know how to create their own, how can they tell their kids to create something? But that's what, exactly. But You're never too old to learn. Like exactly. That, yeah. A lot of yeah. people feel they're too yeah. old to learn. Yeah. Like, I, I should have did it in my younger years. A lot of nah. people feel well, that. Well, you can lead them in that direction. Although I didn't, may have not done it, you know, I know that that's the way it had. I, if, if I could back time up, yeah. then I'd try. Yeah. I, if if my son choose not to play football, and or if he chooses to play football, but he don't get a full ride, so I'm not going to force him to go to college if I know that he's just barely getting by in high school yep. with his grades. You see what I'm saying? Because I'm setting him up for failure. Why not push him to, to get a trade? You yep. see what I'm saying? Why not push him to become a truck driver? Get his exactly. own truck. I can put him in his own truck. He can make now. Think about it. He go to college. What's the average cost of college per year? Forty, fifty thousand. Okay, something like that, I believe. He can make sixty, seventy his first year owning this truck. Driving yep. truck. You see what I'm saying? Yep. After after he done pay everything, so that's his first year. He and don't know, a, he don't know nothing. He don't know he, nothing. He just made seventy thousand dollars and don't know. But that. you got the information to give him it, that. A lot of people don't have go. that. There you go. You, know, you 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 already did the footwork. You put the journey in to you can get information like yeah, like I said, he can just slide into a truck, slide yeah. into a sixty seven k job, and he already know that. So what he gonna be like? I don't want to do that because I already know I can do that. I can fall fall on that and on the back end. I'm gonna do something else. Well, see, even my daughter, you know, when she graduated high school, she went to school USC for a little while, but she ended up joining the military. Mm-hmm. I'm not a big fan of the military. I'm just, I just feel like it ain't a place for, for us, so to speak. Mm-hmm. But however, if that's what she chooses to do, I'm going to support her 100%. You know what she's doing now? She's driving a 
truck. Drop the truck. Yeah, yeah. 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 Drop the truck. Drop the truck. So you know, I mean, as long as they doing something positive, mm-hmm. you know, I feel like you know just. And not like, get like out here. Right. Like Carlton said, you ain't gonna just be hanging out, you know, working at Dollar General and, and parlaying about high. Yeah. Yeah. Coming in smell like a bunch of dope every night. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Eating up all my food. Yeah. 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 Talking about somebody. <laughs> I hate to see people go to school, come out of school with ninety, hundred thousand dollar plus student loan. Right. And they went and got a degree for a job that only pays forty, forty five thousand yep. dollars a year. You'll never pay that degree back. Never. you never pay that now degree Now you got to go to school again and try to get a master's so you get more money. And it's, it's more that's, debt. To, yep. uh, the average master's is going to be like another sixty to $80,000. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So then you want to go get a doctor, that's another $100,000. You, you know, just to get at $100,000. Just to get at $100,000. But you got $300,000 worth of student loan debt. So never going to pay it out. That, never. That compiles. You know, it's, it's why the interest rate got to be so high on student loan. Ain't it? You know what I'm saying? Why can't I write it off? One other thing I want to just put out there too, for all the young people out there, please, please protect your credit. Credit is so inv- important, yeah. so valuable. You know, really? if you learn at a young age, you'll be all right. But a lot of people go out there, they, they give you a credit card, they just pretty much give them away, mm-hmm. and you run them up and trust. Don't me. pay it out. Yeah, right. and get a car, first time yeah. buyer program. Yeah, they they easy to get you in there. Learn, learn a little something though. They they get you to sign that paperwork, and you be so excited to get that new that new ride that you don't look at it because they tell you, oh yeah, we can get your payment four hundred dollars a month. But think about it, how your payment four hundred dollars a month, but you went out there and got a forty thousand dollar car. That 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 math don't yeah. don't add up. Been ten years. <laughs> it's, it's, it's exactly. <laughs> then when you look at it, the interest rate. They charging you eighteen so percent on that car. That's what I had to learn. Seventy thousand dollars for a car. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I had to learn the same thing because my I had got a Benz or whatever, and like, um, I had got um, I had a bad credit. I had five hundred something credit. I thought I was paying like eighteen percent or something yeah, like that yeah, on, yeah. on the Benz. But they let you get it though. Yeah, I was yeah. paying only two fifty two a month or whatever. But like, I gonna be paying forever. It's yeah, like you right. start seeing like, wait. Only the two hundred dollars going to the bill. Yeah. Fifty dollars <laughs> going to somebody else. Yeah, like, I wasting my time. Yeah. Well, yeah. Sometimes, sometimes you have to simplify math for people. I mean, you you anything you do where you borrowing money for something, just simplify it, break it down to, you know, do 10 per, 10%, that's 10 that's $10 on every $100. Yeah. So if your payment $500, what's that? $50. $50 that ain't going towards that payment. Yeah. You it's, see, going, see what I'm saying? it's just going going in there. Exactly. It ain't going to you or to your payment, so that's just like student loans, all yeah. that same thing. Call borrow, payment, borrow, like that. borrow from you. That's what we got to do more in the black community. Borrow from ourselves. Mm-hmm. Build up your savings account. So when you run into that issue where your car need an alternator, you need new tires for your car, um, transmission go out. Yep. You know what I'm saying? You you could just go right into your account mm-hmm. and transfer mm-hmm. that money and pay pay for it. Don't go down there to to the title loan place. Don't go to the um, finance finance place because. You go down there and borrow a hundred for every hundred dollars you borrow from them, they want fifty back. Mm-hmm. So, so if you borrow five hundred and and they want fifty for every hundred. You see, you get what I'm saying? You, you got two fifty. The, there about you go. Setting, you setting yourself up. Yeah. I remember this was a Sunday. My battery had um, went dead or whatever, and so I had to go buy a new battery. But some people they don't got the capital to even right. buy a new battery. Right. So now they, like I said, they got to go borrow some money from somebody and pay a what two dollars a you know how many, dollar. You know how many nice cars? Because pretty much I travel back between Charlotte, Atlanta, um, um, Columbia mm-hmm. a lot. So I'm up and down 85, I 20, 77, yep. you know, 26, 95. And you know how many nice cars I see side of the road with a flat tire? And you just say, oh, you know, they got a flat tire. But then you come back through two days later, that car's still sitting there with a flat tire. And you like, damn, that's a Mercedes. That's a BMW. Yeah. That's a Jag on the side. Of- who who leaves those kind of cars on the side of the road just for a flat tire? I ain't know. Because they paying almost $1,000 a month. And they can't afford the car. They can't afford to put that four hundred dollar tie. That tie is four hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah. See, people don't think about that when mm-hmm. you you know you ain't think about when you went and got a Benz. How much it cost to change the oil in the right. Benz? You see yeah. what I'm saying? It's, it's, it was blowing like thick white smoke out of my back of my own Benz, and I had to 
the pen cost twenty dollars. Would have had to pay for like four hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah, for the labor. For the yeah. labor. Like, yeah, for a twenty dollar part. Yeah, for a twenty dollar part. Because you couldn't part. do it yourself. Exactly. There you go. That's that's knowledge though, and yeah. that's the thing that I feel like with the black community, like we lack that knowledge. If we get more knowledge, then we'll know how to set ourselves up in a better way. Mm-hmm. Like we don't have the knowledge, so that's why we keep doing the same thing that don't lead us to the right territory. But we ain't being being able to teach our kids like we want to, cause yeah. we out working too. Yeah, and you just in a way you get tired. You, before you have kids, be like, I'm gonna teach my kid as much as I can. Do you gotta have kids? They're like, I got to teacher, teach teacher. Your ass, go to school. Mm-hmm. That's what I teach for. Yeah. We pay teachers to teach but, our kids. But we buy these kids all these electronics, but we use them for the. You know, you got kids walking around with a thousand dollar iPhone, two hundred dollar J's, but what their grades look like. <laughs> but not only that, too, with these phones, the, you know, when we was coming up, you, they had a Playboy book or a Hustle magazine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But now they tap in something, boom. Google yeah. got it all. They see what yeah. they want to see. Yeah, and so if hand. you ain't keeping a good eye on these children, man, you know. They become <laughs> porn addicts at five. Not only that, anything, <laughs> they, they get into a lot of stuff on this internet. Yeah. That, 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 Learning that, stuff that shouldn't be learning. Right. Yeah. right. So you got to keep a close eye on it. <laughs> been looking at porn a long time. Long time. <laughs> but before we get out of here, man, we got to have – we got I me. Mean, we got to hear the speech, man. The I dream. I have a dream speech. Let's hear it, man. I want to hear it. Give, give us the two. Ah, man, that's a long speech. Yeah. It's a long give, speech. Give us a piece of it. Then. I give it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Give him a little bit. High school years ago today, a great American whose symbolic shadow we stand signed the Emancipation of Proclamation, and this momentous decree gave us a great beacon of light of hope to millions of Negro slaves who had been seared in the withering flames of injustice, came as a joyous daybreak to end the long night of their captivity. But 100 years later, the Negro still is not free. 100 years later, the life of the Negro is still sadly crippled by the manacles of segregation and the chains of discrimination. 100 years later, the Negro still lives on a lonely island of poverty while in the vast ocean of materials prosperity 100 years later. So we've come here today to our nation's capital to cash a check. When the architects of our great republic signed the magnificent words of the Declaration of Independence, they were indeed signed the promissory note in which every America was to fall short. Yes, it was a promise that all men, black men as well as white men, would be guaranteed the inalienable rights of freedom, justice, and the pursuit of happiness. But instead of honoring this sacred obligation, America has given the Negro people a bad check, and it is a check that has came back marked insufficient funds. But we refuse to believe that the banks of America is bankrupt, and we refuse to believe that there is sufficient funds in the great vaults of opportunity of this nation. So we've come here today to cash this check, check that will give us upon the man the riches of freedom and the securities of justice. We've also come to this hollow spot to remind America of the fierce urgency of now. Now is not the time to engage in the luxuries of cooling off, nor to take the tranquilizing drugs of gradualism. Now is the time to rise up from a dark, desolate valley of segregation into a sunlit path of racial justice. Now is the time. And I'm not unmindful. I'm not unmindful that many of you come through great trial and tribulation. Some of you fresh from their jail cells. Some of you come from areas where your quest for freedom have left you battered by the storms of police brutality and staggered by the winds of persecution. But I say to you today, my friend, even though we're faced with the difficulties of the day and tomorrow, I still have a dream. And it is a d- dream deep rooted in the American dream. Now I hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. Yes, I have a dream that one day, even in the red hills of Georgia, Sons of former slaves and the sons of former slave owners would be able to sit down at the table of brotherhood. I have a dream today, y'all. I have a dream that one day my four little children will one day live in a nation where they won't be judged by the colors of their skin but by the content of their character. I have a dream today. I have a dream that one day even in the state of Mississippi, states sweltering in the heat of injustice, sweltering in the heat of pain, will one day be transformed into an oasis of freedom and justice. I have a dream today. Yes, even down in Alabama, 
But this governor having his lip dripping with the words of inner position and nullification. Yes, even down in Alabama, little black boys and little black girls will be able to join hands with little white boys and little white girls as sisters and brothers. I have a dream today. I have a dream that one day every valley should be exalted. Every mountain made low, the rough places made plain, and the crooked places made straight. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all of God's flesh shall see it together. This is the hope. This is the faith that I go back to the south with. With this faith, we will be able to hew out of the mountain of the spare stone of hope. With this faith, we will be able to transform the jangling discourse of our nation into a beautiful symphony of brotherhood. With this faith, we will be able to work together, struggle together, go to jail together, stand up for freedom together, knowing that one day we will be free. And this will be the day, this will be the day when we sing with new meaning. My country tears are deep. Sweet land of liberty of thee I sing. Land where my fathers died, land of the pilgrims cry. And from every mountainside, let freedom reign. And if America is to be a great nation, this must become true. So let freedom reign. Let freedom reign from the mighty mountains of New York. Let freedom reign from the prodigious hilltops of New Hampshire. Let freedom reign from the hanging and gainings of Pennsylvania. Let freedom reign from the snow-capped rockets of Colorado. Let freedom reign from Stone Mountain of Georgia. Let freedom reign from Lookout Mountain of Tennessee, from every hill and mole hill of Mississippi. Let freedom reign. And when America allows this to happen, this will be the day when all of God church, black men, white men, Jews, Gentiles, Protestants and Catholics, will join hands and sing in the words of the old Negro spiritual. Free at last, free at last. Thank God Almighty, we are free at last. Hey. Hey. First of all, yeah. how you even learn it? What made you learn it? I don't know, bro. Yeah. Just, just listening to it, you know. So you, so you learn. That's it a lot of words to learn. Yeah, a lot. Uh, that's, that's that's like learning the um, you know, the pledge of allegiance, like. And that ain't even the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. That ain't the whole thing. Yeah. yeah. That's a lot to learn. Yeah. Like you got to actually like, did you like practice that a lot, or you just like came naturally? It's like, basically just listening to it, and it, and it ain't all me, you know. I mean, the creative. Yeah, the creative. Yeah. You yeah, like kind of like just start flowing yeah. at a point in time. Yeah. Yeah. You like, you ain't got the same cadence as anything. You know what I'm saying? It's so dope. Like it's not like a pass. It's not like yeah, you gotta have that cadence. You gotta have that cadence, yeah. cadence yeah. Really, yeah. to really make you feel yeah. it and stuff like that, man. Like, that that's dope though. Like that's what I'm saying. Like you the learn so happen. many different things from people. You would never know like you could do that until like you did it. Right. Did. right. Now nah, it's like on camera, man. Man, that's a hidden talent because that's one of them things you see on a Guinness World Record. Like something like that, or like start searching something where like somebody just come out there that's randomly just start saying that, and like people be so amazed. Like when people on that playback, that's gonna be so cool to see and hear. Mm -hmm. But give people your socials. Did it right here. At the Navy Black Studio, yeah. man. Yeah. Navy Black. Navy Black Productions. <laughs> but what's now, your own socials? Tell people where they can find you. Yeah, you can find me. G uh, Gary L. Smith on Facebook. Um, first Class Ride on Snap. I got an IG, but I don't holler deal on there as much. But it's uh, G Thing. 14 G Thing. Yeah. 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 Carlos and Gann on Facebook. Everything gets is Young Buck SC803. Uh, Instagram. Snap. Twitter. Everything gets. Go ahead, Jerm. Uh, Twitter at the Jeremy Gant. Snap and IG Jeremy underscore Gant. I'm gonna watch Twitter because on Twitter, Instagram, and I'm gonna, my son underscore guy with the snap. <laughs> Y'all yeah, know how Sunday means in Swahili. <laughs> <laughs> it means handsome. I'm that guy. I'm that guy. I'm that guy. Go ahead, <laughs> you can follow me on IG and Twitter at the Money QB on Snapchat Fine Ass Twin. You can go to the Navy Black Podcast IG and Twitter at Navy Black Pod. Go to the YouTube, subscribe to your boy. You'll have good conversation. Subscribe and like to our video Navy Black Podcast. Go to the website Navy Black Podcast dot com. Man, we just happy to be back in studio, man. Journey's back this week, man. We just trying to grow. Mm -hmm. We trying to bring value, man. We got Carl and we got Gary. Sorry ass Browns fan, but <laughs> we love him, man. We still love him, man. It's still straight, man, man. Thank y'all for coming again. Appreciate y'all we'll coming. Man. We enjoyed the show. Enjoy. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out to yeah. my daughter, we. Shout out to Tisha. Shout out to Tisha. <laughs> hey.